We the People, an explanation from the office in America in the family of nations. We come before you in the family of nations of the United Nations in our official capacity as the citizens of the United States of America in the family of nations. Serving this legal notice to inform you and the family of nations in the United Nations that the general government of the Republic United States of America has resurrected on the first day of January 2004. Although the current de facto Anglo-Saxon European Administrative U.S. Government 28 U.S.C. Section 3002-15 is mirroring the general government, use they remain subjects of the government de jure, which they no longer represent the interest of the true nationals, Aboriginal indigenous people in the general national government of the Republic United States of America, i.e. colored, black, Negro, Afro-Americans, African Americans, Hispanics, Latinos, Indians, and Asian Americans, i.e. misnomers, hereinafter referred to as Moorish nationals, of whom are the true Aboriginal landowners of the Republic United States of America. Nevertheless, we have listed our demands below, and for the sake of clarification, it warrants us to submit this in-depth historical fact surrounding the Aboriginal indigenous Moorish national landowners, which is listed below, sequential. Respectfully, we also severed this legal notice upon the heads of states within the United Nations, hoping to bring forth love, peace, happiness, and unity among the family of nations in the United Nations. Most importantly, we would like to express our deepest apology to each member within the family of nations, relatives, for our long overdue arrival. However, considering the historical fraud deeply rooted, embedded and hidden in codes, including the miseducation of our people regarding self, we seek your indulgence for this lengthy correspondence. Without further ado, we shall proceed with our historical journey of truth, that is, after defining de jure of a de facto, government de facto versus government de jure, government de facto, a government of fact. A government actually exercising power and control as opposed to the true and lawful government, a government not established according to the constitution of the nation, or not lawfully entitled to recognition of supremacy, but which has nevertheless supplanted or displaced the government de jure. A government deemed unlawful or deemed wrongful or unjust, which nevertheless receives presently habitual obedience from the bulk of the community. C.E.G. Black's Law Dictionary, 6th edition, Government de jure, a government of right. The true and lawful government established according to the constitution of the nation and lawfully entitled to recognition and supremacy and the administration of the nation, but which is actually cut off from power or control. A government deemed lawful or deemed rightful or just, which nevertheless has been supplanted or displaced. That is to say, which receives not presently, although it received formerly, habitual obedience from the bulk of the community. See E.G. Black's Law Dictionary, 6th edition, United State of America's Aboriginal Indigenous Moors. We are in the de jure preamble general national government of the United States of America in the family of nations and resurrected, restored preamble. Free inhabitant, qualified, common law, Aboriginal, Indigenous, Native and Hakdar natural born. Free inhabitant, qualified, common law, Aboriginal, Indigenous, Native and Hakdar natural born. National of the de jure preamble, General Government of the United States of America in the family of nations who have declared, proclaimed, reclaimed, recorded and implemented his sovereign posterity rights of national in accord with 8 U.S.C.S. S.S. Willowen and 1 A. 22 A. S.S. Mikensen to the 3 A. E. Al. Citizenship in the 1782 to the present seal de jure preamble general government in the family of nations according to the law of nations who having repledged the original pledge of allegiance to the private national and official flag of the united states of america enacted in 1777 and pursuant to 4 uscs chapter 1 ss1 thereby also having complete and perfect residence in the united states republic form of government hereinafter defines moors the term Moor has the ancient root of Emister founded in the old Moresh Tamarian Maru Amaruka, i.e., the old Moorish language of what has come to be known as Egyptian, Hebrew, and America languages, respectively. The scholarship word Kemet that has come to mean black land or black people's land 
is not the ancient word for Egypt. The ancient hieroglyphic clearly shows that the proper term is Tamur, to Emesa or Patamera, the ancient land of Egypt. See E.A. Willis Budge, an Egyptian hieroglyphic dictionary, EHD, Volume 1, P. 315, and T. Volume 2, P. 1050, Tamori Tamera. The Moors or the land of the Moor is the hidden and true nationality of the real ancient Egyptians. The word Kmite is a geographical name where the praiseworthy black dirt settled, Chmt, Wachmt, Hmd, Hamad Root, Mhmd, or Muhammad, one who is praiseworthy, or one who is P, raised up out of and in the darkness or blackness, i.e., ignorance. The root word Mr, an abbreviation for Mr and Master, comes from the old Moorish language or letters, OML, of Mimra manifestation of enlightenment or the thought of God. Mimra, or God manifested, is another name for ASR. In the Old Testament, ASR is the mysterious, unpronounceable name of the Lord who Moses talked with, and not Jehovah or Yahweh. HWH, Ahai, ASR, Ahai, I am ASR Osiris, I am. See the Torah by Union of American Hebrew Congregation, TT 1981, P400, Exa 3, 14, teen, or the Greek word Osiris. Osiris is actually Os plus Iris, and when translated properly means bones and mouth, OS, messenger's eye, and to form into IE, the messenger as of God, who became the word that spoke the foundation of the world into existence. CEG, Oz and Iris in Shorter Oxford English Dictionary by William Little, SOED, 1933, Oz also means to know and Iris to observe, therefore, Os Iris also means to know by observation science. Osiris ASR is also called Bay, root Bai, or Bai, meaning noble priest or a form of Osiris and Ra. When the Moorish Empire ruled the world, all bailiffs were bailiffs. The term Bay became Bay and Bai, EHD, Vol LP22 and SOED, P137, SB2, SB3 and Bailiff, Belit. In the ancient history of the distinguished surname Bay, by the Historical Research Society in Orlando FL, states that these Bay's pioneers became the nucleus of the first settlements from Maine to the Cumberland Gap. They provided much of the stock that produced the early presidents and governors of the United States. In Canada, they settled Nova Scotia, the St. Lawrence and Ottawa Valley. The family name Bay provided many prominent contemporaries such as Colonel Bay, who created the Rideau Canal and founded Ottawa. Bay in Old English or Moorish English originally meant governor and prince, or beg, Big is great, C-E-G-S-O-E-D-B. The word Moor Maru is the actual word found in petroglyph on Mount Moriah Moriah. Moors are the lords or Jehovah Yahweh is Moorish, for the scholarly word Hebrew. The original A-B-R, A-M-R, referred to themselves as Maru, Mori, illustration 1-1. The term M-R also means mountain, mound, or pyramid. Therefore, Mount Moriah, or mountain of the Lord, means Moors of the Lord and not Hebrews or Jews, H.B. Yahudi, Jew. The language of the Hebrews is the national language of the Canaanites, biblically referred to as Sephach Canaan, see Gentile 11 to 1. And the land of Canaan is the geographic title, but not the national title. The Canaanites called themselves MRTU, or more to, therefore, the language dialect of the Hebrews is actually a dialectical language of the Moors. C. The word Amaruka, Hamurika, is the origin of the modern term America that has absolutely nothing to do with the made-up person historically called Amerigo Vespucci. Nor did Cristobal Colon Christopher Columbus discover America or actually exist. The term Ama, ICA, is far older than the 15th century. In the Time magazine, ISBN 0811290847-3, they produced a copy of the oldest known map of North America, see Illustration 2. The article stated that this ancient Libyan Arabic script, CA, the 1st century BC, and in the center of the continent, i.e., Nevada is the word M -er, M-er, Moor, and possibly being the origin of the word America. Barry Fell, Emeritus Professor at Harvard University and author of Saga America Time Book, states that America probably has nothing to do with Amerigo Vespucci. Also see Isis Unveiled for more info on this subject. Dr. Fell indicates several pre-Columbian cultures in the United States West 
finding rich evidence of an early Arabic presence, including many instances of decorative signatures of the Prophet Muhammad. He suggests important correspondence between Pueblo, city Indian culture, and North African cultures. He infers a major Carthaginian, Canaanites, more to Moors, trade with North and South America. In an article entitled, Secret Societies in the Ancient Americas, see ill. Three, it states, ancient Masonic lodges have been discovered among the American Indians, what he called an ancient Indian Masonic lodge, at an Anasazi Indian archeological site, 80% identical to the Masonic lodges in America now. In the ancient lodge, there were 50 rock and clay tablets, which he dates 1000 and 1200 AD, written in what appears to be Arabic. Even the name America may be the product of ancient American secret society. In an 1895 edition of a magazine called Lucifer, published the occult-promoting theosophical society, the word America, he said that the supreme god of the Mayan culture of Central America, known as Quetzalcoatl elsewhere, was known in Peru as Amaru. Amaru's territory was known as Amaruca. Illustration 4 and 5 states, Origin, some authorities believe the Indians to be of Hebrew, Maru, Moorish origin. They base this belief on the fact that the Indians were a very religious people. Also saying the Indian tribes had Old Testament legends. They worshipped one great spirit and never idols. Their name of this deity was Aele, the Hebrew name for God. Their form of government was also similar. There are similarities of language. Nahula and Uneka, white people or impure animals. These words describing white people as unclean animals is an important in the connecting of the white slaves to the ancient whites or things of Amorica, i.e. the legendary Atlantis. It is also important that Egypt, Atlantis, and America's predominant population was always depicted as copper coffee complexioned and not really red as the modem Indians or Native American is commonly depicted. At this time, the term Indians should be closely looked at. The term Indian is a later Latin word coming from Hindi or Sindhu, meaning dark-hued and transferring from the older Latin word Ethiopian. The term Ethiopian is not of African origin, and it transfers back to the Greek word Ethiopian, meaning Moorish and Moros dark-hued. Jack D. Forbes, in his book entitled Africans and Native Americans, PI 69 states, In 1524, the people of the Carolina coast were said to be of dark color, not much unlike the Ethiopians. The Charlotte Observer, dated Sunday, August 15, 1993, stated that North Carolina in 1690 reported the presence of Moors and that they are the ancestors of a people erroneously called Melungeons. Mr. Forbes also states on PE 64 that when Africans are referred to in the Jesuit letters, they are always called Negro D.A. Gain, Blacks of Guinea to distinguish them from Negro D.A. Terra, Blacks of the Land of America. And on pages 67 and 71, he states, French Noir, Black and Negre, Black or Dark Person, French Moor Moors as equivalent to Negro from Guinea. Thus, Negro is used for Indian and not for someone from Africa. In any case, it is clear that many Iberians and Italians, whether in Europe or America, were comfortable using Negro, Negri, etc. for American. C.E.G. Ilded 6. The copper coffee complexioned Negro de Terra are classified in Black's Law Dictionary 4th and 6th edition as Femme Couleur Libre, meaning free, libre, colored nation, femme or people. Black's Law 6th edition, Pazai 118, Femme Couleur Libre up to the time of the Civil War, this term applied to all persons not of the white race, including Indians. Again, the word Indian originally did not mean Native American or American the way it is used today. However, it did mean Ethiopians, Negro de Terra, Native of America, and Moors. C.E.G. Indy, Cassell's New Latin Dictionary, CLD, by D.P. Simpson, 1960, page 299. Note, the term Native American refers to the second group of Americans. The first group esoterically, the Moorish Negris Indians known as the Aboriginal Americans. The third group is the term Indigenous Americans. Words like Native American, American, and many more are words of art, C.E.G. Black's Law Dictionary, 4th ed. P. 17 to 79, or idiomatic, an accepted phrase or expression having a meaning different from the literal the Old Moorish Latin, originally called Latimer Latimore or Latina, 
see Black's Law Dictionary, 4th ed. p. 1027, consisted of three sorts of law Latin. The third or esoteric sort was, and is only known to a select few, called sages, which consist of idioms, words of art, and also called lawyers, Latin, or law Latin. Law Latin, the corrupt form of the Latin language employed in the old English law books and legal proceedings. C.E.G. Black's Law Dictionary, 4th EDP, I'm in 30. This idiomatic lawyer's Latin was developed by the Latimers, Latin Moors, long ago in order to maintain absolute control over all judicial proceedings and the administrating Mamluk government continues this practice to the present. The genius of this fork-tongue language is found today in the most of the time unconscious Moorish males who created sayings like Yo, she show is bad, what's up, chill out, etc. As Moors, we must reap what we have sown. The second American group, that is, the so-called Native Americans, are wards of the government and differ greatly from Aboriginal Americans, First Americans. The term American is so vague and has totally replaced the phrase citizen of the United States, and this is no accident. C.E.G. Words and Phrases, W and F, in a law library for the definition of American, as follows. An English subject who enlisted as a seaman on an American vessel floating the American flag, no such flag, the flag of the United States, was while enlisted. An American, under the protection and subject to the laws of the United States, equally with a native-born, not natural-born seaman. American as used in a devise, contract, to be used by trustees, guardians or wardens, for the benefit of worthy, deserving, poor, white American Protestants. This means all descendants of Europeans born in America, especially the inhabitants, not citizens, of the United States. See Ilbert 7. Every so-called civilized nation has a patron saint. Does the members of the family of nations of the United Nations know the patron saint of the United States? Have you ever asked if there is a patron saint and what is his name? The name of the patron saint is Saint Tammany whose birthday is celebrated on May 1st, Epiphany Moors, and he was a Lenape Delaware chief. The word Tammany is rooted in the words Tami, ancient Moorish group and tame, originally meaning those who tame, that is to say, civilization bringers. Tammany also means affable, friendly, or easy to approach. The European denizen proprietors of the United Colonies of America found themselves comfortable and at ease in Tamanani's presence while attempting to negotiate an agreement that would allow them to become an annex part of the Aboriginal Indigenous Native Moorish United States of America's government in the family of nations that was, and we believe is headed in the truth hark of the law, by the Osman Bay's empire. See E.G. Tammany, Dictionary of the American Indian, D.A.I., by John Stoutenberg, Jr., in 1960, Pajafatos IV. The Olmitian civilization of Central America is considered by most scholars to be the oldest high culture in America. The word Mexico comes from the word Olmec and the coded Moorish word Amexim. This word is a verb, place of the mixing, and not a noun, name. Most scholars deduce this word from Oli or rubber people. However, it would be better translated Oli, Ali, exalted ones and the people who bounce back, the Phoenix, its Phoenicians, Canaanites, MRTW Wanmutu, the Moors. The term Olmec, when esoterically understood, means Almac, son of or belonging to Al, Allah, or El Mike, those from Mecca, the Meccans. One of the oldest meanings of Mecca, okay, Abaka, Bar Sol and Ka, spirit, is veteran or belonging to Egypt or TMR, T Moors. The original Meccan, Olmeccans, was of the family Imran. In the Quran by A. Yusuf Ali, Surah Chichipi, Three, Iyat verse 32, 33, it states, Allah did choose Adam, Noah, the family of Abraham, and the family of Imran above, exalted Ali and Oli, Oli, all people, offspring one of the other, and God heareth and knoweth all things. Who was and is Imran, the last of the chosen family of God? Imran is a word of art term that can be fully comprehended when one applies the ancient Moorish Arabic three radical roots. In a concordance of the Quran, COQ, by Hannah E. Cassis, Pajun 266 and 267, the idiom term I Moran becomes MR, Moor. The I in is silent and the letter N is a terminal plural that becomes the modern S, therefore, I in 
silent, and mRNA gemis as Moors. Also the letter N, none meaning water, sea, and ocean, adding to the meaning of the word Imran, i.e. Moors. Merman or Mormon navigators, helmsmen and governors. Remember the first governors or presidents of the United States where Moors with the titles of Bay? Note. Nun is also Nu or Nut, meaning sky, heaven, celestial abode, or from high. In the book Africa and the Discovery of America Black God of Ancient America, states the following The first Americans were black. The scholarly Latin author C. C. Marquez explains the strong probability that black people were the first people in America out of which later came the red American race, the second people. The Native Americans also referred to the Leni Lenape and Anasazi as the old ones or old enemies. It is likely that, we repeat, that long ago the youthful America was also a Negro continent and that the Ottomies, Ottoman of Mexico, are the remains of the Aboriginal Negro race out of which developed later what is known as the Red or American race. Professor Alexander Jan Wuthenau, unexpected face in ancient America, adds how black people were present in America in the most ancient or pre-classical times. The startling fact is that in all parts of Mexico, archaeological pieces representing Negro or Negroid people have been found, especially in archaic or pre-classic sites. In this regards, the testimony of Nicholas Leon proves on how ancient the African presence was in America. In fact, he says black people were the original people, the first people of Mexico. The memories of them in the most ancient traditions induce us to believe that the Negro were the first inhabitants of Mexico. Historia General de Mexico, Mexico, 1919. Colonel A. Braggin says that he saw in a collection in Ecuador a statuette of a Negro that is at least 20,000 years old. The Show of Atlantis, PP 4042 NY 1940. The phrase, we, the people, of the United States is far older than the preamble clause and is not referring to the American citizens. In prehistoric America, a people of the Moorish ancestry called Lenape, or the people in Leni Lenape, which translates to grandfather, the old ones, original people, and we, the people. The Lenape are now called Delaware Indians, but they never called themselves this. All other so-called Native Americans referred to the Lenape, the nappy head ones, as the very ancient ones with magic, Nanticoke. William Penn, by his own account, written in his own hand, said, The natives shall consider in their person with my sense of original. For their person, they are generally tall, straight, well-built, singular proportioned. They tread strong and clever and mostly walk with lofty chin. Of complexion, black, but by design, as the gypsies in England. William Penn's 1683 account of the Delaware Indians. Before we proceed further, you should also note that the word gypsy is a word of art term for Egyptian. Moors. See Egyptian Black's Law Dictionary, 4th ed., page 606. Ancient and Modern Britain, David McRitchie, Bolos 2, pp. 239 and 357. It is not so very long ago that the conventional gypsy was of almost black complexion. The followers of John IV in the old ballad are spoken of as the Black Crew. And in 1861, the Indian of New England, or Moors, as they were also styled by the settlers, were pronounced by William Penn to be as black as gypsies. This statement of Penn's may even mean that the British gypsies of 1861 were quite black. To say then that those Indians made themselves as black as gypsies may signify that the gypsies of 1861 were distinctly blacker Moors. The larger proportion of the ancient nobility of the southern and central parts of Great Britain was slaughtered in the latter part of the 15th century, in the period in which the swarthy Morris Douglas and Gordon of southern Scotland ceased to be formally recognized as landowners and nobles. If in any of these cases the vanquished survivors of this Blackamoor nobility, the tents and turf-covered wigwam of the gypsies that were peculiar to certain early British tribes, much in the same way as the vanquished Dukes of North America have done. Note, the fact is, perhaps, scarcely worth noticing, but the aristocracy, royal nobility, of the earlier 
inhabitants of North America described as Indians and Moors by the settlers are designated emperors, kings and dukes by the writers of the 16th and 17th centuries. The Leni Lenape, i.e. we the people, are also known as the Woad Woodland Culture. Anasazi and mound builders, however, their national name was Monacan, sometimes erroneously called Monacan and mistakenly called Moroccan, by the traditional Moorish Americans or Moorish nationals, not to be confused with our national and preamble, Moorish citizens of the United States of America, the term Monocan meant one spiritual people or united people. The Monacan Empire of the United States was a union of three confederacies, I, Algonquian, two, Iroquoian, and three, Siouan linguistic groups with 13 zones, the basis for the 13 original states, 16 national states, and numerous tribal city units, small towns. The Moorish Monacan Empire domain was north into Canada, south to the Gulf of Mexico, east to the Atlantic Ocean, and west to the Ohio Valley. And law and order was maintained by their supreme law of the land, i.e., the constitution of the Five Five symbolized complete unity and not individual states, nations, aka the great law of peace, Islam, and originally called Gayanashagawa. The Monokan Morokan Confederati was primarily, principally, and predominantly Mauro's complexioned and copper coffee hues. The legendary founders of the great law of peace were Dekanawida an angel of the Lord, and Hiawatha, the man who wrestled with the angel of the Lord, Jacob. The pine or white pine was the national symbol of the United People, and this same pine symbol transferred to the official flag of the United States of America, centralized in the United States in Congress assembled, and historically called the Continental Congress Flag of 1775. The leaders of United Peoples of America was the Mohawks, pronounced Mohawks, and now falsely written as Mohawks. The Lenape Moorish Monacan Empire strayed away from the great law of peace, warred amongst themselves at the behest of their British denizens, reinstituted slavery of Caucasian people, and adopted Christianity. By 1677, the Monacan Moors were forced into a treaty as liege subjects with Lord Charles II, which by 1729-1774, the Monacan corrupt empire was all but finished. See, e.g., Virginia Colonial Records, 1677 Treaty between Virginia and the Indians. However, by July 4, 1776, the resurrected Monacan Moors pronounced to the world the authentic, a declaration by the representatives of the United States of America in General Congress assembled, not to be confused with the Denizen British Proprietor's Declaration of Independence. For further information on Free Moors Moors people in pre-Columbian America, see Strangers in Their Mist, S. and R. McLeroy, and the Melungeons, Brent and Robin Kennedy. First, resurrection of the Moors of the United States and the liberation of the Denizen British proprietors. The latter 1700s to the mid-1800s saw the demise of the Aboriginal Moors of North America's Lenape Monocan Empire that set in motion the conditions by the heavens rule that would eventually lead to the establishment of the United States of America in the family of nations and the Republican form. Art and Force, SC4, Constitution of the United States of America, CUSA of nation-state governments. From the forced Virginia Treaty of 1677 to the 1772 Watauguan or Washington Constitution of North Carolina in 1772, the Morris natives of North America lost self-autonomy to their British denizen Morris and mulatto kinsmen. However, before going any further, it should be clearly understood that the old, corrupt, and decaying Moorish Empire formerly controlled virtually the entire world. However, for our concern, there are three major dominions vital to the people of the United States, i.e. 1. the Monacan, 2. the British, and 3. the Ottoman Empires. The Monacan Empire of the United States terminated officially in 1776-77 with the creation of the amalgamated non-Caucasian leadership, United States of America, that was, at that time, an insignificant world power. Also at that time, the British Empire of the United States was additionally controlled by Moors, Mulattoes, and Mamluks, respectively, and neither America nor Europe had a white face. 
The modern-day white-faced Great Britain Empire actually started in 1914 at the end of World War I and the defeat or the breakup of the Ottoman Empire, however, the tree of Osman Bey lives still by the heavens' rule. The fourth or crossover, while crossing the Burning Sands Empire with the appearance of a white face, is the American Empire with the Suedo Great Seal of the United States in the United Nations by heaven's rule. Furthermore, there is by Ashak, C.E.G. Black's Law Dictionary, for six Edun, a fifth horse, and the planet Earth has entered into this cycle. Also keep in mind that the old Monarchan Empire of the United States and the old British Empire of the United States were Moorish Morris Empire of the Ottoman Empire in the family of nations. And with the demise of the Osmanli Empire, the Modem Great Britain Empire became number one until 1945-48 when the power shifted to the mirror image United States of America in the United Nations. There are more than one United States and each has its own, one president, two Congress and three justices inter alia in North America. United States, one, this term has several, more than one meanings. It may be merely, word of art, complete or totally, the name of a sovereign, nation or state, occupying the position analogous, in a special or proper position, to that of other sovereigns in the family of nations. Black's Law Dictionary 4, 6 said, Family of nations is an aggregate, completion, total or all, of states which as the result of their historical antecedents, a time or period before modern day his story was fabricated, have inherited a common law and law of nation, Art I, Section 8, Clause 10, United States Constitution, civilization, and are at a similar level of moral and political opinion. Constitutions, documents and credentials, Black's Law Dictionary, 7th ed, P621. The sovereign power of the United States in the family of nations is vested exclusively in the United States government. 76 Montoir 76, State ex rel versus diction gouverneur et al, no final de 160 S. 7 Montana, February 10, 1923. The family of nations embodies divine law, the Fas Fez, Netarus, Elohims, Aloha, Titans, etc. Law of nations and common law and has been around for modern man prior to immemorial antiquity, out of the minds of men. Today, it is part of the Dragon Court, one president of the United States, the official title of the chief executive officer of the federal government. There is no such thing as a federal government written or mentioned in the supreme law of the land nor state constitutions in not of the United States Black's Law Dictionary 4-6 Ed. The following quotes are provisions for one, a president of the general national United States government, and two, a corporational national United States government, respectively, in the United States Constitution. One, the electors shall meet in their respective states, capital S, and vote by ballot for two persons. And they shall make a list of all persons voted for, open all the certified, and the votes shall then be counted. The person, cap sir P, having the greatest number of votes, shall be president, after the choice of the president, the person having the greatest number of votes of the elector, not conventions, shall be the vice president, without the dash. Art 2, Cis C1, United States Constitution. This is the one group that picks the winner and sidekick. 2, the electors shall meet in their respective states, small s, and vote by ballot, small b, for one president and two vice president, this with the dash. They shall name in their ballots, small b, in the plural ending, the person, small p, voted for as president, and in distinct, totally different ballots, the person voted for as vice president, and they shall make distinct lists of all persons voted for as president, and of all persons voted for as vice president. The person having the greatest number of votes for president shall be the president. The person having the greatest number of votes as vice president shall be the vice president. Amendment 12 of the United States Constitution. These are the two groups that picks one winner from each six group. After the stock market crash of 1929, the banking holiday of 1933, subject to certain restrictions, the present law forbids member banks of the Federal Reserve System, not a presidential cabinet member and private corporations, to transact banking business except under regulations of the Secretary of the Treasury during an emergency proclaimed by the President, CEG 12 USCA Section 95 Black's Law Dictionary, 4th ed, PRC 15, and 6th ed, page 146. 
and a fourth branch of government in the United States was created without lawful constitutional authority or provisions as it pertains to its illegal usurpation of the preamble and constitutional United States government in the family of nations. This fourth branch, department government, is known as the federal government, however, a more accurate term is the administrative federal corporate government in the United States of America or management government in the United States government. It too has a president based upon the federal election campaign, which differs from constitutional election process. The administrative office of the president was the office of administration authorized January 2nd, 1979 by President Jimmy Carter's executive order Nun 12112. There are three presidential offices, one constitutional of the general government, two executive corporate government, and the administrative agency government. None of the presidents of the United States in my lifetime have been elected either in accord with Art 2, Section 1, or Amendment 12 of the United States Constitution. There is no constitutional provision that allows the winners of the partisan conventions, who somehow become a candidate the Electoral College select from, to choose or pick the candidate for vice president, therefore the person of whom the United Nations been communicating with, Mr. George W. Bush, Joe Biden today, is in fact a de facto president, illegally acting and performing as the de jure president of the United States of America of the family of nations. The ordainers and establishers of the United States Constitution provided that an officer of the United States shall act as president inter alia under emergency conditions. In the case of removal of the president from office or of his death, resignation, or inability to discharge the power and duties of the said office, the same shall devolve on the vice president and the Congress may by law provide for the case of removal, declaring what officer shall then act as president and of such officer shall act accordingly until the disability be removed or a president shall be elected Artney 1, Section 2 of the United States Constitution. 1. If, by reason of death, resignation, removal from office, inability, or failure to qualify, there is no president pro tempore to act as president under subsection B of this section, then the officer of the United States who is the highest on the following list, and who is not under disability to discharge the power and duties of the office of president, shall act as president. Secretary of State, Secretary of Treasury, Attorney General, Secretary of Energy. Two, an individual acting as president under this subsection shall continue to do so until the expiration of the then current presidential term, but not after a qualified and prior entitled. Preamble posterity citizen individual is able to act. C. E. G. 3. U. S. C. S. C. C. 19. D. E. 2. Think USC Sec 2004, officer, employees, means a justice or judge of the United States and an individual who is one required by law to be appointed in the civil service. Every president et al. after Franklin D. Roosevelt have been civil service employees, i.e., the highest officer of the United States, chief executive officer of the known constitutional administrative federal agency of the United States. C. E. G. Fink USCS. Section Domi Hano Sank, employee, civil service worker, means an officer and an individual who is a uh, one appointed in the civil service. Every president, a al, after Franklin D. Roosevelt, have been civil service employees, i.e., the highest officer of the United States, chief executive officer of the known constitutional administrative federal agency of the United States. C. E. G. 5 U. S. C. S. Section Dunieta Lo Sank. Employee, civil service worker, means an officer and an individual who is, one, appointed in the civil service. As stated earlier, the current chief executive officer employee, or if you prefer, the highest officer employee, civil service worker, of the United States, is acting as president, has been officially notified by the preamble and constitutional United States governmental representative in the family of nations that his et al. acting and performing services are no longer necessary required or acceptable as of first day of February 2004 because a preamble prior entitled individual being a qualified free inhabitant, allegiance, and natural born citizen resident of and in the United States is able to act and perform constitutional duties and has been elected as president pursuant to the United States Constitution 
Therefore, any denial, disregards, or conspiracies of any kind are clearly express acts of usurpation and total disrespect for Hark, the supreme law of the land, any oath taken and personal honor. Three, the United States Congress is the Administrative Civil Service UN Constitutional Congress and not the Article 1, Sections 1, 2, Clause 2, A, and the Congress of the United States. The term Congress can mean the Congress of the United States and the United States Congress, however, the Congress can only mean the Congress of the United States and never the United States Congress. Also, the Senate of the United States, Art Mut 1, Section 3, is totally distinct from the United States Senate Civil Service Employees. 5 U.S.C. Sec. 2107, Congressional Employee, means do an elected officer of either house who is not a member of Congress. The current unconstitutional United States Congress consists predominantly of assembly members elected from either the Republican, not to be confused with the Republican form of state government guaranteed in the United States Constitution, Art 4, Section 4, and Democratic parties, the Senate. The formal official organization of the Senate is given in Art 1, Section 3 of the Constitution. The organization of the Democratic and Republican parties in the Senate is called the informal, unofficial organization of the Senate. This organization is not mentioned in the Constitution. The House of Representatives, like the Senate, has both formal and informal organizations. The formal organization of the House is specified in Art 1, C2 of the Constitution. Democrats and Republicans in each House have special committees that nominate members of the standing committees. World Book Encyclopedia, Vol. 4.1980, pe pagina 589-758. I shall elaborate further below regarding the non-constitutional American democracy. The American judicial system is not the same as the laws of the United States. The laws of the United States are found on common law embodied in the United States Constitution, and yet the majority of democratic municipal states of the administrative federal government in the United States unlawfully and apparently does not recognize it nor honor their allegiance agreement in their states. 5 U.S.C.S. Section 1501 2 Constitution to the Supreme Law of the Land. In order for any court to try an action case, it must have original jurisdiction. And unfortunately, the type of citizen you are determines the type of jurisdiction or court one will be heard in. For all intent and purposes in litigations, there are only two types of citizens, i.e., those preamble posterity and natural-born citizens of the United States who are protected pursuant to Art 3, Section 1 and 2 of the United States Constitution. The judicial, small j, power, caps a, p, of the United States, shall be vested in one supreme court. The judicial power shall extend to all cases in law and equity. The supreme court shall have appellate jurisdiction, both as to law and fact. The 13th and 14th Amendment, inclusive of the permanent resident aliens subject to the United States jurisdiction, 11th Amendment to the United States Constitution. The judicial, cap J power, small p, of the United States shall not be construed to extend to any suit in law or equity commenced or prosecuted against one of the United States by citizens of another state or by citizens or subjects of any foreign state. The administrative courts are normally presided over by magistrates, and these judicial employees consistently practice maintenance, common barratry, champerty, and other forms of officious intermeddling in favor of the state wherein Moorish nationals reside. Most importantly, I personally request that you pay close attention to the following terms in order to better understand what status are included in this American society. Public. Public purpose, synonymous with government purposes, as used in the Constitution, is synonymous with governmental purposes. Key number digest and indexes state 114 public. In another sense, the word does not mean all the people, nor most of the people, nor very many of the people of a place, but so many of them as distinguishes them from the few. Black's Law Dictionary 46 ed. When today's governmental official declare that they are doing so and so, whether it is increasing taxes, public restriction licenses, or abridging and denying constitutional rights in the name of public safety, welfare, etc., they are doing it for the government, i.e., themselves. 
Population, Fro, Eng, Populus, and Lat. Popular is Populus. The vulgar multitude, the uncultured and unrefined, the population as opposed to the aristocracy or the Senate US. The popular vote by Americans to elect the president is today unconstitutional and ignored by the present administrative federal government. Presidents are chosen long before the population cast, i.e., throw away their vote. The term popular also means democratic or a democratic process of voting in an American democracy, even though there is no mentioning of a democracy in the Constitution. See E.G. Cassell's New Lat Dictionary, CNLD, and Black's Law Dictionary, 4 6 ed, for definitions, people. In a more restricted sense, and as generally used in constitutional law, the entire body of those citizens of a state or nation who are invested with political power for political purposes, that is, the qualified voters or electors, the people as the repository of sovereignty or as a source of government power or to popular government, we are in fact speaking of the selected and limited class of citizens to who the Constitution accords the elective franchise and the right of participation in the offices of government. See e.g. Black's Law Dictionary, 4th ed. page 92. Further example, if warranted, if an unconscious Moorish Aboriginal hear or see in the courts, the people of the state of versus John Doe, or anyone you may know, under over inner stand, you are not the people. You are in fact the population, i.e. the vulgar, unlearned, and ignorant masses. Person, according to the rank he holds in society, term may include artificial beings as corporations. Persons are of two kinds, natural and artificial. A natural person is a human being. Artificial persons include a collection or succession of 13th and 14th Amendment citizens, natural persons forming a corporation, but a sovereign is not, but not even a human being is necessarily a person, for a person is capable of rights and duties. And there may well be human beings having no legal rights, as was the case of slaves, not serfs or indentured servants, slaves, in English law. Black's Law Dictionary, 4th Edward, P.P. Gilles Verne, 99, Mule 300. There are three national governments in the United States, and each has its own citizens. The 1782 present seal United States government in the family of nations de jour, with its preamble, Aboriginal and natural born citizens thereof. The 1791, 1933 to 1979 federal corporation government of the United States, quasi defunct, with its naturalized permanent resident, 13th and 14th amendment citizens thereof. The 1933-present Administrative Federal Agency of the United States Government in the United Nations, de facto, with its nationalized denizen citizens thereof, status and place of birth. 1. Prior to 1677, the Moors, so-called black, brown, and red people, were slave masters of the Caucasian serfs. 2. White slaves were actually owned by Negroes and Indians in the South, to such an extent that the Virginia Assembly passed the following law in 1670. It is enacted that no Negro or Indian, though baptized and enjoy their own freedom, shall be capable of any such purchase of Christians. 3. While whites languished in chains, blacks were free men in Virginia throughout the 17th century. 4. In 1717, it was proposed that a qualification for election to the South Carolina Assembly was to be the owner of one white man. 5. Negroes voted in the Carolina counties of Berkeley and Craven in 1706, and their votes were taken. 6. Blacks were toting guns or other weapons and going about armed in the service of wealthy landowners at the same time that tens of thousands of enslaved white men were forbidden arms. In 1678, 1,000 Negroes were armed by the planters and formed into a fighting militia for the protection against the French. 7. In Carolina in 1704, 1707, 1712, 1738, and 1741, a bill was passed authorizing armed Negro militias in the service of the planters. 1742 certificates were presented to black militiamen for services rendered. 8. The colonial powers were not adverse to call on unlikely policemen to suppress white slave revolts. Blacks. Blacks were permitted to the colonial militia responsible for policing white slaves. The aristocratic planters had felt the necessity to arm part of their black men to assist in suppressing white slave revolts. 9. 
Armed black militias patrolled the Carolinas from the end of the 17th century to at least to 1710, when Thomas Nahan reported that blacks continued to be members of armed colonial militias organized by local governments. One nine taken from They Were White and They Were Slaves, TWS, by Michael A. Hoffman. The term colonial militia in the preceding quotes must be clearly understood, as well as the words Negro and black in the following pages, in order to get a truer picture of the Moorish troops, blacks and Negroes who were soldiers of the Continental Congress or Confederation Congress, i.e. the United States in Congress assembled, established shortly after 1776 and authorized by the United States of America government, domestically governed by the Articles of Confederation and internationally in agreement with the laws of nations of the family of nations, headed by the Moorish Empire, a.k.a. Ottoman Empire. Note, I elaborate further on the so-called Continental Congress below. For our purpose, there were two major jurisdictional states in the 17th and 18th centuries, i.e. the Aboriginal Moorish United States, controlled by the United States in Congress, assembled AKA. The representatives of the United States of America in General Congress assembled, who pronounced to the world the official and authentic a declaration of July 4th, 1776, that officially initiated the Revolutionary War against the brutish British Moorish Empire. As stated earlier, the 4th, 1677 Virginia Treaty made the Western Hemisphere Monarchan Moors of the United States liege subjects of their Eastern Hemisphere denizen kindred British Moors of the United States. Keep in mind that both the Monarchan United States of North America and the British United States of Europe were part of the corrupt and decaying United States of the Moorish World Empire, aka the Ottoman Empire. According to a declaration of 1776, historically and deliberately falsified as the Declaration of Independence to the American people is a pronouncement to the Moorish World Empire that the old Monokan Moors of the United States shall henceforth be officially known as the United States of America and said, United States government has returned to its former sovereign with complete and perfect self-autonomy. And that said, government shall no longer tolerate nor accept liege subjugation nor foreign occupation. Also, they mesoterically inserted within their Declaration of the United States of America the Colony Declaration of Independence headed by the denizen British proprietors who would later become a third party in the ordination and establishment of the United States of America governed under the Constitution of the United States of 1787 before viewing both a declaration pronounced by the original 13 nation states of the United States of America and the Declaration of Independence by these 12 United Colonies in the United States, which was attached to a declaration. You must understand the following terms and words in their original form and meanings. 1. The Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the A flag of the United States of America and to the B republic for which it stands. C. One nation, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. The term under God was added later by the administrative federal government to in part legally subjugating all of its 13th and 14th Amendment citizens for their purposes, the term God can mean Government, Ordinance and Department of Justice, G-O-D. A, the preamble, constitutional, private, national and official flag of the United States in the family of nations is lawfully defined pursuant to 4 U.S.C.S. Chapter 1, Section 1 as follows. The flag of the United States shall be 13 horizontal stripes alternated red and white, and the union of the flag shall be 48 stars, white in a blue field. This flag was enacted June 14, 1777 by the United States in Congress assembled, Confederation Congress, that is the authority by which the Congress of the United States assembled, or the Congress of the United States, Art I, Sections 1 and 2 received its constitutional powers. The Administrative Federal Government, AFG, gives no reason why it is stated in Title IV USCS Chapter 1 Section 1 that the official count for the amount of stars is at the present 48 stars. However, certain historians affirm that the Stars and Stripes is the oldest national flag in the world. C.E.G. The History of the United States Flag by Milo Quefe, page 107. Title IV Official Flag Section 
also has a historic section, not to be confused with Title IV, Chapter 1, CSIC 1 official flag, with its flag that is not authorized nor enacted by Congress. This flag of the United States is a creation of the federal presidential executive orders. The flag of the United States, U.S., shall have 13 horizontal stripes, alternated red and white, and a union consisting of white stars on a field of blue. In Section 2, the term Union now becomes Union Jack, and in Section 23 of this executive order, a strange statement is made if the executive order flag is the same as the official flag. The size of the Union Jack flown with the ex Ors national flag shall be the same as the size of the Union Jack of that another national flag. The word that, when referring to time, always means the former one or period, and this means the present or most recent. The can mean either, I, I, both past and present. The official flag of US is referred to as that national flag, and the unofficial X or flag of the US is mentioned as the, the can mean this national flag. That means first, and this the means the latter and present. Also notice that the executive order flag states that only the size of the union shall be the same as that other flags but not the same flag. These United Colonies of 1776 were provided for in the 1787 Constitution under the mesoteric term of Providence Plantation, or the 14th State, which became official in 1791 as the Federal Corporation, 28 U.S.C. Sec. 3002, 15 A.B.C., United States of America, whose function it was to govern, incorporate, and make profits from or off of the 12 former United States, a.k.a. the United Colonies, i.e. the 12 or the 12th, as indicated in Art 7 of the United States Constitution. Again, keep in mind that the white Negro slaves, under the old corrupt and decaying Moorish Atlantean Empire, were not considered as true or natural human beings. They were thought of as genetically engineered artificial beings, or what is called today an alien and a corporation made up of natural persons without any rights as the slaves of England. Colonial Caucasian white people are indigenous to Europe, therefore they were alien to the United States even though they originated in the Americas. They had nor do they have any claim to this land, so long as they claim to be white because they are still declaring their slave status. I.Z. White has never been right. No alien has the right of a national, natural-born citizen of the United States. Words and phrases at your local law library. Volsto 37 a p 321 Revolution presupposes antagonism between government and its nationals, and aliens has not right of revolution against the United States. Kiar v. Doak, CCA, il 61 f 2 d 566, 569, Nationality of a man means his natural allegiance. Follow 3 P 148. Aliens are persons, artificial, within the meaning of the Equal Protection Clause and also within the meaning of the prohibition of the 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution. Follow 14 A P 463. The Equal Protection of Law Clause of the 14th Amendment extends its protection to any person within the jurisdiction of the state and is separate and independent from rights protected by the Privileges and Immunities Clause. Art 4, Section 2 of the United States Constitution. Plantation. In English law, a colony. In American law, a farm. A large cultivated estate. Estate. MF estat becomes, by Ephesus, the ME stat, whence prob. After estate, the English state ESP, that of a political and of a national unit or power, to fix or establish. The denizen British proprietors who joined the Franciscan United States were allowed to incorporate the former farmlands. E-states, plantations or colonies of the former British Empire into the general national U.S. government via the federal corporation. U.S., however, the former and nationalized Art 1, Section 4, United States Constitution, i.e. naturalized British proprietors never intended to actually set the Caucasian white slaves free, even though the Constitution ordained its Watt 8 Section 9 Clause 1 termination by 180708.
nor did these denizens have a flag that represented their annexed corporate nation-states prior to their War of Independence, not to be confused with the revolutionary war initiated by the former Moorish Monacan landlords of the United States at the same time. The original flag of these united colonies that eventually became the Federal Corporation. U.S. came from the Union Jack, that is to say, the national flag of Great Britain and Ireland, which combines the harmor of St. Patrick with the cross of St. George and St. Andrew. The word Jack is most probably derived from surcoat charged with a red cross, anciently used by English soldiers. This appears to have been called a Jacques, Black's Law Dictionary, for long to foi de pas amuse seven cents de deux. The term Union Jack includes a dash, and in law the dash means is often used to indicate the omission of the intermediate terms of a series which are to be supplied in reading, being thus often equivalent to inclusive. Thus Mark V 320, that is verses 3 to 20, the years 1880-1888, that is 1880-1888, Black's Law Dictionary, Volage Wall Pierre 472, the term surcoat used by the English soldiers is a quasi-word of art, WWOA, used to conceal the historic fact that Sir Kate also was the coat of Anne's of the Hebrew Maru, Uber or Supersur given to the coat. So-called animalistic white English slaves used in some cases forced military service of the tyrannical Moorish Brutish Empire of Europe. C.E.G. Webster Dictionary, W.D. for the word coat, coat. The term Jack, as it pertains to a flag, represents a private national ensign or ancient standards, and it indicates a type of coat of arms. The first flag of the corporate colonial U.S. was raised officially January 1, 1776, and called the Cambridge Flag. The official United States in Congress assembled. The Congress passed no resolution adopting this denizen American flag. The Cambridge Flag of 1776 is the Union Jack of the nation of Great Britain, and not the dashless Union Jack displayed in the Merriam-Webster New International Dictionary of the English Language, 1943-68, nor described in 4 USCS Chapter 1, Secchi 1, Flags to Color from the American Revolution, FCAR, 1996. The first flag historically reported by General George Washington, used by General Washington, was the first troop Philadelphia Light Horse. The original Light Horse flag used the Union Jack of the British nation, however, this 1774 Jack was eventually replaced by the 1775 Jack with its 13 stripes, 7 white and 6 red, the opposite of the unchanged 7 red and 6 white stripes of the official flag of the US. The official flag of the U.S. in 1774-75 was called the Continental Flag, with its white cedar and or white pine of the Monocan Moorish Empire of the United States on a red field. The question one should ask is how come General Washington, according to his story, did fly the official Continental Flag the United States in Congress assembled? We know that he was made commander and first dash in must second dash chief of the American forces and or the army of the United Colonies. The commander dash in dash chief is the exact same title given to all corporate administrative federal convention presidents. Placing of gold fringes on national flag, not the flag of the US dimension of flag, and arrangement of stars in union are matters of details. One who belongs to the army but is only detached or set apart for the time for some particular duty or service and who is liable at any time to be recalled to his place in the ranks. Black's Law Dictionary, Volume 6, page of 049. Not controlled by statute. A formal written enactment. The official flag of the U.S. is controlled by enactments only, but are within the discretion. See Black's Law Dictionary, Vols 46 of President as Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Navy. 4 USCS, Chapter, Interps and Notes and Decisions, 1980, PA 95. The Commander, Dash, in Dash, Chief of the Army and Navy of the U.S. from General Washington to the present Administrative President is not the preamble and constitutional a President of the United States, Art Su, Clause 1, Const USA, nor Commander, No Dash, in No Dash. Chief of the Army and Navy of the United States, Art 2, Section 2, Clause 1, United States Constitution. The Administrative President Bass been given the detail via constitutional provisions as the highest 
officer shall then act as president, and such officer shall act accordingly until the disability be removed, or, and a president shall be elected, R2 Section 1 Clause 6 of the United States Constitution, even though the present administration has been officially notified of a prior entitled and preamble posterity natural born citizen president having been elected and all disabilities being removed, they, i.e. the chief executive officer of the federal government, et al., has not acted according to the supreme law of the land, SLL, inter alia, and continued to conspire against and to usurp the power, authority, rights, privileges, immunities, jurisdiction, territories, and other property belonging to the legitimate preamble people and general national United States of America government in the family of nations, pursuant to the law of nations according to the truth hock of the law. Be the republic for which we stand is so written in the CUSA. The United States shall guarantee to every state in this union, prior to 1789-91 i.e., before the corporate federal government was subordinately annexed incorporated in the United States of America, FON, as a new and entire member of the U.S. for the sole purpose of acting and performing for our government when the general U.S. government, for whatever reason, could not or did not function, i.e. national and state of emergency and the corporate management for the general. U.S. government as it pertains to the government management agency of the 12 Providence Plantations or Colonial Business Estates. The United States of America Constitution does not mention nor provide for a departmental partisan democratic government at all. It only provides for a republican form of government for all the people, by all the people and of all the people. The word people does not include the general population or public when dealing with constitutional law. People like a nation is constitutionally referring to the preamble people their posterity, natural-born citizens, not natural-born or native-born citizens and subjects, a nationalized, naturalized resident of the United States, not Washington, D.C., be the one nation, i.e., in one united people. People, a nation in its collective and political capacity. Black's Law Dictionary, Vol. 6, page 1135, Nation a people or aggregation of men existing in the form of an organized dural society, usually inhabiting a distinct portion of the earth, speaking the same language, using the same culture, possessing historic continuity, continuation or continental, and distinguished from other like groups by the racial origin, Aboriginal people who are not Native Americans, that is, wards of the state, and characteristic, and generally, but not necessarily living under the same government and sovereignty. Black's Law Dictionary, Volant 6, page 24. The term preamble originally meant to stand for before two, preamphi or ambi. What two? The two relative Moorish people of the United States, i.e., the Aboriginal citizens and the indigenous denizens, nationalized or naturalized, of the United States of America, who being originally from the Ottoman Empire, Osman Bey, the once head of the family of nations. The word we, coming from the Moorish Hebrew A-N-W, Aini, Anwi and we, is an I-ism, or one group. It is the plural singular like the word team, and the scriptural words God, L-H-E-I-M, pronounced Elohim, A-L-H-L-H, H is a passive plural in the old Moorish Arabic and Tad Hebrew dialects, and the Nigretian, 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 Grecian, or the original Greek words Theo, Theon, and Theos. God, the gods, and a god. Theos is in the Bible translated the Word of God, the O's or the so-called Jesus, Oz, Us, or Ez. Theos, the O's, or the mouthpiece, the messenger, and the royal family of the gods who came to or incarnated in the earth. See E.G. below on the Antichrist for more information on Jesus. The word we, royal, means real and real, once meant realty and real estate, I-A-E, that which is real. Israel and the Chosen of God, the real state or sovereign nation people, real Adders Moray Eels, the Rokui Lenape Moors or the landowners. The word preamble and the phrase, we the people, is a contractual clause that provided and does provide for two people only, we, the people of the United States, in order, analogous order, in a logical order, from the top, aboriginal to the bottom, indigenous, promote the general welfare 
and secure the blessing of liberty to one, ourselves, and two, our posterity. All the blood relatives in all directions, including denizens around the world, do ordain and establish this Constitution of the United States of America. The preamble did not, nor does not provide constitutional human rights for the white Caucasian slaves and involuntarily servitude black African, nor Leitman, or any other 13th and 14th Amendment colored person, red, brown, or yellow. Scientifically speaking, the modem day fields of archaeology and anthropology has without a doubt shown that there are only two types of human beings, and that both types came from the vogue popular term, erroneous as it may be, African ancestry. What they are not telling the public is that African descent does not mean African nativity, and that Africa today was named after a Canaanite MRTW, Moorish Roman citizen named Sipo Africanus, whose army defeated Hannibal, destroyer of weak men, cannibal, cannibal, Hannibal and priest of the Lord, Ban, Khan, Ait Cohen, priest, I, or belonging to and Balbii, Bay ALH, or Lords Rulers of the Earth. Jesus was born in Beit Elam, the royal family of Bays, Bethlehem. The ancient Africans, native to Africa, never called their land Africa. The word of art term, AFR Ica, root AFR, can be traced back in time to APHR. APR, ABR, or Eber, IBR, Hebrew. However, the word Hebrew, ABR, EBR, IBR, was originally AMR or Amaru, pronounced Mori, Muri, or Moors. Note, AF. Re or Afrakan also means flesh skin of Ra, Neanderthals genetically altered, fourth level incarnation of the sky people or the ancient slave races. As I have consistently mentioned throughout this notice, the original and sovereign, legitimate, and constitutional United States of America's government is a part of the family of nations. The family of nations means just that, a family or relative and no, natural person calling themselves a color, i.e. black, brown, red, yellow, or white, according to the ancient law of nations, is legally or contractually considered a human being in the United States et al. All people must declare, inter alia, an aboriginal or indigenous nationality, or else stay in Babylon, baby lion eggs lion's children. The lion is a national symbol for the country of England. Therefore, Babylon, baby lion, has a meaning of English children or the enslaved children, Ku, a. As mentioned above, there is no mention or provisions in the SLL for any democratic government or American democracy. The word democracy in its modem form means that form of government in which the sovereignty is in and is exercised by the whole body of free citizens directly or indirectly through a system of representatives. Black's Law Dictionary, Volus 6, Pajata 2022. The crucial point in the preceding definition of democracy is free citizens. In America today, there is only a very, very, very small percentage of the population that are free citizens, i.e. preamble and natural born citizens. The remaining populace are 13th and 14th Amendment citizens, permanent resident aliens and or contractual slaves. The word democracy comes from the Greek words demokratia and diaomia. Demo comes from demos or demon. Diomia, and together they mean mob and or demon, or inspired or inflamed disposition. Kratia means power or rulership, and together they are understood to indicate conquering power. Today in the American system it means those in power, who control the voting masses, mob control or the mob, politicians that controls. Throughout the Old Testament, OT, the word GWI, pronounced Goyum or Goys, is used to describe an animalistic people with a populi, civitatis body politics, and who is also depicted as a foreigner, aliens and heathen from the true God, and they are the last nation to rise in the West. The word in English is Gentiles nation, but the proper translation for this time period is American democracy. Goys, a Hebrew and English lexicon of the Old Testament by Edward Robinson, 1858. B, the word partisan, comes from part, a part of and partisan, to win or to beat. In a republic, a government ran by the all, whole free citizen does not allow for any special interest groups or political subdivisions to govern the free inhabitants, 
the illuminated and excellent George Washington inaugurated April 35, 1789 as the first magistrate or chief magistrate, the chief executive officer of the federal government in the United States, i.e. the president of the corporate United States. In his inauguration speech, Washington stated the following about the party system. In contemplating the cause which may disturb of union, it occurs as a matter of serious concerns that any ground should have been furnished characterizing parties by geographical discrimination. Designing men may endeavor to excite a belief that there is a real difference of local interest and views. One of the expedient of party to acquire an influence within a particular district is to misrepresent the opinion and aims of the other districts. You cannot shield yourselves too much against the jealousies and the heart-burning which springs from these misrepresentations. They tend to render alien to each other those who ought to be together by fraternal affections. To the efficacy and permanency of your union, a government for the whole, not a party, is indispensable. The basis of our political system is the right of the people to make and to alter their constitutional government. But the constitution which at any time exists till changed by an explicit and authentic act of the whole people is sacredly obligatory upon all, the spirit of innovation upon its principles, however serious the pretexts. One method of assault may be to effect, in the terms of the constitution, alterations. This clause has been effected by and this clause has been superseded. CEG, United States Constitution, which will impair the energy of the system and thus to undermine what cannot be directly overthrown. I have already intimated to you the dangers of the parties in the state. Let me now take a more comprehensive view and warn you in the most solemn manner against the baneful effects of the spirit of the party generally. This spirit, unfortunately, is inseparable from our nature, having its root in the strongest passions of the human mind. It exists under different shapes in all forms of government, more or less stifled, controlled, or repressed. But in those of the popular form, it has seen its greatest rankness and is their worst enemy. The alternative domination of one faction over the other is sharpened by the spirit of revenge, natural to party dissension, which in different ages and countries has perpetrated the most horrid enormities, is itself a frightful despotism. But this leads to a more firm and permanent despotism. The disorders and miseries which result gradually incline the minds of men to seek security and repose in the absolute power of an individual. And sooner or later, the chief of some prevailing faction, more able and more fortunate than his competitor, turns the despotism to his own elevation on the ruin of the public liberty. The common and continual mischief of the spirit of the party are sufficient to make it the interest and the duty of a wise people to discourage and restrain it. It serves always as to distract the public council and enfeeble the public administered dons. It agitates the community with ill-founded jealousies and false alarms, kindles animosity of one part against another, ferments on occasion, riots and insurrections. It opens the door to foreign influence and corruptions a free country should inspire caution in those entrusted with its administration to confine themselves within their respective constitutional spheres, avoiding in the exercise of the powers of one department to encroach upon another. The spirit of encroachment tends to consolidate the powers of all departments in one and thus create, whatever the form of government, a real despotism. C.E.G. Monuments of Washington's Patriotism, M.W.P. E.Ed. 3. Pub. Trustees, L1841, PPJ85, 88. The following is taken from Documents and Reading in American Government, DRAG, by John M. Matthews, Macmillan Company, 1928, PPJ987, 88, 91, 92, 250. There is no provision in the national constitution for political parties. Apparently, the founders of our government felt that parties were not only unnecessary, but undesirable. To the efficacy and permanency of our union, a government for the whole is indispensable. No alliances, however strict between the parts, can be an adequate substitute. They serve to organize factions, to give it an artificial and extraordinary force, to put in place of the delegated will of the nation, the will of the party. Often a small but artful and enterprising minority of the community, and according to the alternate triumph of different parties, Unprincipled men will be enabled to subvert the power of the people 
and to usurp for themselves the reins of government, destroying afterward the very engines which have lifted them to unjust dominion. One method of assault may be to effect, in the form of the Constitution, alterations which will impair the energy of the system and thus to undermine what cannot be directly overthrown. Party candidate is, in no real sense, a part of the manner of holding the election. This does not depend upon the scheme by which candidates are put forward, does not directly affect the manner of holding the election. We cannot conclude that the authority to control party primaries or conventions for designating candidates was bestowed on Congress by the grant of power to regulate the manner of holding elections. The framers of the Constitution did not ascribe to them of any such meaning. A notable tendency in national administration has been the creation by Congress of important agencies independent of the executive departments multiplied instead of single-headed in form and vested with a quasi-legislative and quasi-judicial as well as with strictly administrative functions and that they shall be representative of various interests whether political parties or other group interests. The partisan unlawful and unconstitutional powers that are practiced today in part goes back to George Washington as the first magistrates annexed presidential corporate powers. The following is taken from the senatorial response after G.O. Washington's 1789 inauguration speech. We, the Senate of the United States, congratulate you on the complete organization of the federal government, on your elevation to the office of president, an office highly important by the powers constitutionally annexed to it, in which the appointment is made, MWP PI-79. According to historic scholars, Washington was elected to the office of president. However, the above quote clearly indicates that he was appointed to said office. Also, the term annex comes from the Latin words one, subiaceo eri, and two, necto eri, subicere, to be subject to, to lie under, to substitute, and to suborn, to procure in a secret or underhand manner. Black's Law Dictionary, Vols. 7. Nectera, nectera of persons to bind, fetter, enslave, especially for a debt, CNLD, PP, through Hugh and Thrindy and 576, Annex, the word expresses the idea of joining a smaller or subordinate thing with another, larger or higher importance. Black's Law Dictionary, Vols. 46, the corporate or administrative office and powers of the Federal President of the United States is subordinate in nature and not constitutional, thereby allowing said office to be controlled by a democratic partisan government. Thur, A, the Revolutionary War. The English word revolutionary comes from the Latin word I, res publica or res publica and tu republica conversio. These terms mean for us, we the people of the Lenape Moorish Monacan United States, realty interest which must be returned back to US. Simply put, the word revolutionary means to revolve back and to revolt to recovery i.e. Sankofa. CNLD, et Papien 51, qui ont dit 17, qui ont dit 19, ont dit 17. The Revolutionary War in America was and is a war via declaration to proclaim, in writing, the total return, recovery, resurrection, and implementation of a sovereign people with self-autonomy, with the added purpose of analogously including initially the Mauro's denizens and eventually the Caucasian white serfs. B. The War of Independence. The word independence comes from the Latin word libertas, or to be set free. The Mauros or mulatto British-French denizens, aka European proprietors, company presidents, precedents, Einz governors who wanted to be free from the British control of their commerce. However, a colony, plantation, estate, or subsidiary corporation does not have the legal right to independently declare its freedom from the parent company, let alone take complete control of its stock delivery stock, livestock, the white serfs of Europe, without a company takeover. The British proprietors contractually attached themselves to the takeover company, the Moorish or Maros representatives of the former Monarchan United Empire States of America, to assist the Moors in their revolutionary war, while the denizens incorporated their war of independence. The United States and Congress assembled agreed to finance these united colonies, and to attach the colony's historic and subordinate Declaration of Independence by the unanimous Declaration of the 13 United States of America to there. A declaration, 
The Congress included in the contracts that the governors of the colonies agree to terminate white slavery by 1807-1808. During the period of the Northwest Ordinance of 1787, Africans from Africa, African nativity, were set free, and the original 13th Amendment Art of Section 12 states, the traffic in slaves with Africa is hereby forever prohibited on pain of death and the forfeiture of all rights and property of persons engaged therein. And the descendants of Africans shall not be citizens of the Federal Corporation United States. A type of freedom for Africans is also found in CCB of the same amendment article. Involuntary servitude of Africans, except for crime, shall not be permanently established within the district. Persons held to service or labor for life shall not be denied the sojourn. Even though the British proprietors agreed to free the white slaves, and after the quasi-white slaves fought honorably, they reneged on the contractual obligation. November 8, 1898, the amalgamated Moors, Maros, Mulattoes, and Mamluks illegally, unlawfully, and unconstitutionally fraudulently, via a conspiracy and force, instituted a permanent partisan democracy government while the real army and navy of the United States was engaged in a military campaign against Panama. Today's administrative de facto democratic partisan government have continued the usurpation via et al. the declaration of white independence as a pretext to justify the coup d'etat of 1898 and historically calling it the Wilmington Race Riots. See book entitled Democracy Betrayed, however, a better title would be the Republic Usurp. The poor white populace, as they were called, did not benefit or actually participate in this overthrow of the constitutional Republican form of government. Neither was or is they free from the 14th Amendment, subject to the slavery jurisdiction of the United States. As there are three types of citizens embodied within the Constitution, there are also three types of declarations, natural born and resident, Preamble Citizens of the USA, Article 2, Secchi 1, Clause 5, Resident and Naturalized, Nationalized, Denizen Citizens of the USA, Article 2, Secchi 1, Clause 5, and Art 1, Section 8, Clause 5, Naturalized and Subject to, Permanent Resident Alien Citizens of the USA, 13th and 14th Amendments, Three Declarations, The Authentic and Official, A Declaration, Pronounced July 4th, 1776, by the United States of America's government in the Family of Nations CF Preamble. The historic and unofficial Declaration of Independence attached to and within a declaration and the jurisdiction of the United States of America in General Congress assembled respectively CF Denison. The democratic and unconstitutional Declaration of White Independence, November 8, 1898, 1929, used as a pretext by the corporate Mauros, Mulatto and Blanco conspirators and citizens of the United States government and representatives respectively, and constitutionally ordained, thereby initiating the ambiguous growth, authority and empowerment of the post-1929-79 administrative federal agency and management government within the jurisdiction of and belonging to the preamble Constitutional and General United States Government in the Family of Nations, CF 13th and 14th Amendment, Black, Brown, Red, Yellow, and White Colored. CEG below further information regarding the 13th and 14th Amendment citizenship, Alien. The three pre-stated types of nationals of the United States are also defined as follows. A. Preamble Posterity. B. Free Persons. Art. 1. Sec. 2. Clause 3. C. Natural born, D. Naturalized resident citizens, Articles 1, Sec. 8, Clause 4 and 2, Sec. 1, Clause 5, E. Republican state citizens, Article 4, Sec. 4 and Sec. 2, Clause 1, with added privileges and immunities, so written in Amendment 14, Sec. I, Sentence 2. This national citizen can also be found in 8 U.S.C.S. Section 1101, A. 22, A. The denizen, or A, free person, including those bound to service for a term of years, word of art, Art 1, Section 2, Clause 3, and B, naturalized, nationalized resident citizens of the United States, Art I, Section 8, Clause 4, and uh, Article 2, Section 1, Clause 5. Also, this denizen national is attached to the preamble national citizenship according to 8 U.S.C.S. Section 1101A, 22B, via allegiance, 
and amalgamated within a Declaration of 1776 as the Declaration of Independence, especially the last paragraph of both the authentic A Declaration and the historic Declaration of Independence. Well, three fifths persons, Article 1, Section 2, Clause 3. Esoterically, a person who is three fifths human simply represents an individual who lacks, our lack angel, complete control of the spiritual or mental inner senses outwardly described as the physical senses of seeing and hearing. The other three are the sense of smell, taste, and touch. Hue or complexion has nothing to do with a person being truly classified as being three-fifths a person, however. Anyone who designates themselves as black, brown, red, yellow, or white, or allows others the authority to do so, is a colored person or person of color, three-fifths human. Colored. It has been held that there is no legal technical signification to the phrase colored person, which the courts are bound judicially to know. Oscar v. Douse, 31 text 74, color. An appearance, semblance, or simulacrum as distinguished from that which is real, hence a deceptive appearance. Concealing lack of reality, a disguise or pretext. See also colorable. Colorable. <laughs> Counterfeit, feigned having the appearance of truth, counterfeit, to forge, to copy or imitate, without authority or right, and with the view to deceive or defraud, by passing to copy or thing forged for that which is original or genuine. Counterfeit in common parlance signifies a false image or representation. Black's Law Dictionary, Vols 4.6. The terms color, colored and colored persons are word of arts, and in their simplest form means a person who is not really human or an individual without the capacity to, or one who does not use his ability to see, perceive, or hear, understand. The structure of the United States of America. 1. Unit stock shareholders. A. We, the people of the United States of America. B. The posterity of the people of the United States of America. C. The natural born citizens. D. Naturalized, nationalized residents of the United States of America. E, all of the above, analogous, are the beneficiaries of a private public trust association known as the United States of America according to the law of nations and belonging to the family of nations. 2. The people of the United States are of two types. A. The people. The state nation. As the people of the state of North Carolina, and generally used in constitutional law, the entire body of those citizens of a state or nation who are invested with political power for political purposes. This truly applies to all governmental employees and their political corporation. B. The individual natural-born and congressional legislative naturalized residential citizens of the United States. C. The term posterity as used in the preamble citizenship simply applies to all the descendants of a person in a direct line to the remotest generation. D. Person, a human being or a natural individual, a partnership, association, corporations, legal representatives, trustees, etc. The general United States, I-782 present seal government according to A. The private, national and official flag of the United States. B. The Constitution of for the United States of America and Law of Nations. The Republican form government for the states guaranteed in and by the United States Constitution. The representative of the sovereign, A, general national United States government, and B, the republican form of state governments thereof. The individual preamble posterity and hakdar, i.e., holders of rights and properties so written in the supreme law of the land. The free inhabitants and qualified voters in the republican form of state government, constitutionally ordained and established. Note. The sovereign people and government of both the general national United States and the Republican states are preambly included as the prosperity of the United States of America. 3. The trustee of the United States is the 1782 to the present official seal and general United States government in the family of nations with its private national official flag of the United States. A. The Sovereign Political Association Corporation Trustee, a.k.a. the Republican General United States Government, can only be lawfully and constitutionally represented by 1A, B, C, and M, D, previously mentioned. No other type of citizen can permanently, in the truth hark of the law, constitute a constitutional trustee officer. 4. 
the assistant trustee offices are the Republican form of state governments that are subject to the Allegiance Article in the Declaration of Rights of all Republican states' constitution. All trustees are constitutionally bound to operate the trust for the beneficiaries I, A, B, C, D, who are the A, private preamble individual natural-born citizens, and the B, public preamble governments who are persons' artificial and corporations' citizenship. Our original, sovereign, legitimate, and present sealed United States of America government was and is ordained and established as a common law free association trust, unincorporated corporation or partnership to benefit the private free inhabitant individuals and the public governmental persons. The United States in Congress assembled, government was and is an association confederation that evolved into became involved with a confederal federal corporation around 1791. Being a subordinate and annexed business trust of the general United States government, this federal corporation government of and in the United States is and was completely distinct from any and all municipal, lat municipio incorporation, and the post-1933 administrative government of the United States. The subordinate and annexed United States 1791 federal corporation government went bankrupt between 1929-1934, however, the sovereign association of the general United States government did not nor did its beneficiaries. Since the banking holiday of 1933 and the FDR's administration, the administrative agency government of the United States in the United Nations has and is acting as a type receiver and ministerial office. For our purposes, there are three United States governments. A, the 1772 to the present sealed United States General, unincorporated confederal government, according to the law of nations, in the family of nations, and so written in the preamble and articles 1-7 of the Constitution of the United States of America. This sovereign government cannot be sued. Freehold. B, the 1791 federal corporation government of the United States that went bankrupt between 1929-1933. This subordinate and annexed government had some association with the League of Nations. This corporation is considered a person, and all persons can be sued. All 13th and 14th Amendment citizens, since the Emancipation Proclamation, became saleable, merchantable, for the bankruptcy of 1929-33, and are listed as natural resources, copyhold. See the Fourth Branch Government of post-1933, a.k.a., the Agency of the United States, i.e., the Administrative Government of the United States in the United Nations and with its Great Seal Eagle and Egyptian Pyramid. This administrative ministerial government is in power and with some color for sure of receivership, leasehold. 1. Sovereign United States Government, Family of Nations, Confederation. 2. Corporate Government Annexed to the United States, League of Nations, Confederal. 3. Administrative Government in and of the United States, United Nations, Federal. 5. The Constitution of the United States of America, Preamble and Articles 1-7 is the will of the people of the United States and is a contract with their trustee in the trust performance and legal requirements. Both it and the Mission States Preamble establishes and includes the supreme law of the land. The United States of America Constitution lays down the laws of the United States in common for the assistant trustees, Republican states' performance and operations. There is no direct mentioning of individual citizen rights unless we include Art 2, Section 1, Clause 5 and Art 4, Section 2, Clause 1. The rights of the natural-born preamble citizen and the individual free inhabitants of the Free Association of States are so written in the fundamental principles of the Declaration of Rights within the Constitution of the Republican form of state governments guaranteed by the United States of America Constitution. The natural-born preamble citizens of the United States are also the free inhabitants, freemen, of the free association of the Republican form of states government subject to the general federal common law and guaranteed by the United States of America Constitution. These citizens of the United States are additionally protected by the so-called National Bill of Rights. However, these ten amendments were originally designed for the congressional naturalized denizen residents of the United States, i.e., the allegiance amalgamated and Moro's European proprietors who are not natural-born Aboriginal citizens of the United States of America, even though these European denizen proprietors 
have now become indigenous and natural-born citizens of the United States. The senior trustees or junior trustees of any type of trust are obligated to the beneficiaries created by the grantor and the trustees may establish a business trust or corporation to secure various gain for the beneficiaries of a private or public nature. From and prior to 1898, the federal corporate government of a copyhold colorable character and up until 1933 did intentionally usurp and impersonate the freehold United States sovereign or general government, thereby causing to the present a states of general emergency for both the sovereign government and individual free inhabitants of the United States of America, inclusive of such non-preamble and unconstitutional evil as 1. Disunion 2. Injustice 3. Disharmony 4. No defense nor protection against the violations of preamble citizenship 5. Poverty 6. Slavery the 1898 coup d'etat initiating in Wilmington, North Carolina, also called the Wilmington Riots, and in other states named other disturbances under the fraudulent and illegal pretext of the Declaration of White Independence, November 8, 1898, has never been corrected in any branch, department, or agency of the trustee receiver of the administrative government in the United States sovereign and general government. The administrative government of the United States has all but done away with the usurping bankrupt federal corporation government of the USA, however, as ministerial officers of the United States, it has not respected nor complied with the preamble mission statement nor the contractual will of the people of the United States as it pertains to the posterity beneficiaries of we the people of the United States. Six. The majority by far of the population of the United States are property and wards of the Administrative Federal Government, AFG, via the 13th and 14th Amendments. The 13th Amendment does not prohibit voluntary slavery or servitude. The laws of the U.S. via common laws do allow for persons to legally contract even their rights and properties. Therefore, one can voluntarily, through ignorance, application and contract his or herself into voluntary subjugation. The birth certificate, outside of the ignorance of the law and lawyers, is basically the initial instrument that is used on bewildered parents by the AFG municipal state governments. A. State Corporation, B. County Corporation, and C. City Corporation. The overwhelming majority of the administrative incorporation government officers and employees are ignorant and completely in the dark when it comes to the distinct United States, their jurisdiction, and their citizens thereof. The term slavery, so indicated within the 13th Amendment, is a code word coming from, in part, the words 1. Slaw Slow Sloth Slow Slav 2. Slav Slov Sloven Slavonic peoples and Slab 3. Slab Slaw Slaughter were piece of meat The word serf, serve servant, applied to the English Caucasian people, once meant serf people, and landlocked slaves or property of the state, prince. The word slow, slaw in slaw or slaughter, also means to be uprooted or biblically to be supplanted. It, additionally, represents a defeated or punished thing. The artfully and deceitfully idiomatic term white comes from 1. Wit, quit, least bit, 2. White, a thing or creature, preternatural or preterlegal. 3. White, to punish and to inflict pain. In this modern day cycle, the original slaves came from the conquered and passive Neanderthal people of old who were domesticated domestic made made by the ancient Morris complexioned Moors over thousands of years and various methods of cultivating them. This doesn't include the so-called non-Caucasian white persons who did not descend primarily directly from the worldwide Neanderthal people. The word slave can only apply to white blacker persons regardless of your color. The phrase involuntary servitude once actually referred only to Morris and mulatto hued people. Even with all of the lies about the human drama, modern scholarship with its expert historians have never taught that we know of that the so-called black, brown, red or yellow people having ever volunteered to become slaves or to be put in bondage. The history, his made-up story, we are fraudulently taught doesn't go that far. 
However, the so-called non-white races have a history of being forced into bondage or involuntary servitude. On the other hand, there is no history of the Caucasian English serf of Europe becoming a slave. He always was. The words slavery and servitude are rooted in the Latim or Latimer Latin words servio and servus. The letter V is also pronounced B and out F, E, G. Serve, serb or serf means to be subject to another's jurisdiction or control. The feminine of serve is servitus and it also has the meaning of liability to certain burdens. The 13th Amendment's omission of the phrase voluntary slavery and servitude is a crucial step in the arrangement of the 14th Amendment's white Negroes, contracted serfdom and liabilities to indeterminate taxes. All preamble natural-born citizens, resident citizens and free persons, including those in government service for a term of years, are constitutionally responsible for a direct tax. 1. Property tax. 2. Capitation tax. 3. Ad valorem tax. 4. Tax on real estate. B. Exercise taxes. The payment or fee placed on manufacture, sale, merchandise, and upon licenses to pursue certain trades, commodities, etc. However, no preamble citizen of the United States of America is subject to C. Income tax and D. License tax. C. Income tax is a tax on persons artificially constructed, i.e. 14th Amendment citizens, whether natural human beings or corporations that are attached to the United States of America Constitution, as the 16th Amendment between 1909-13, and was a part of the corporational government of the U.S. implementing usurpation and impersonating of our general government. D. License tax is a price paid to municipal governmental authority for a certificate or the document itself, which gives permission. License tax being defined as a sum exacted for privileges of carrying a particular occupation. Exact from the Lat. Exactio, exaction. Exaction, the wrongful act of an officer or other person in compelling payment of a fee or reward for his services under color of his official authority where no payment is due. A license, simply put, is a permit, i.e., a document or instrument granting permission to do or perform something or not to do or perform something by a sovereign or superior to a subordinate or inferior. It is permission or certificate of liberty granted. To gain a clearer understanding of the 14th Amendment citizenship, the United Nations must have additional information about the true origins of the Caucasian white persons people in the early United States of America. There is, and always have been, a legal difference between 1. A white person, and 2. A free white person. 1. White persons. Members of the white or Caucasian race, as distinct from the black, red, yellow, and brown races. C.E.G. Black's Law Dictionary, 4th ed. P. 1769. Free white person. European Jews. Intermixed. Celtic. Iberians. Mixed Latin, Celtic Iberians, and Moorish inhabitants of Spain and Portugal, the mixed Greeks, Phoenicians, and North African inhabitants of Sicily. It does not mean Caucasian race. Black's Law Dictionary, 4th ed. P. 792. Today in America, a large amount of Caucasian white people are beginning to recognize that they are not free inhabitants. Anyone who associates his or herself with color superiority or otherwise is not a freeman. C.E.G. Black's Law Dictionary, 4, 6th ed. However, all white black persons are legally considered as free men. Free men? A free man might be a man of small estate dependent on a lord. Every man not himself a lord was bound to have a lord or be treated as unworthy of a free man's right. Black's Law Dictionary, 4, 6th ed. All of the free men in America are bound by their lord, the municipal state. The term state is internationally recognized as and often called prince. A prince is a lord over the population for the king's sovereign government, i.e. the national government. This is, in part, the state wherein they reside, i.e. the municipal administrative collection state. The term white inhabitant can be traced back to the Articles of Confederation, ADC, Article 9, Section 5, where it is used by a committee of states and civil service officers for managing the general affairs and to ascertain sum of money. 
This is a contradiction of the term free inhabitant of the Republican states who enjoy and are entitled to all privileges and immunities of a free citizen expressed in Article 4, Section 1 of said articles. In the Constitution of the United States of America, the phrase white inhabitant has been translated to three-fifths of all other persons, Art Fun, Section 2, Clause 2, and to such persons, Art 1, Section 9, Clause 1, hidden from public sight. The 14th Amendment, although never properly ratified into law, Section 1, all persons, natural and artificial born, the act of being delivered via a birth certificate application. Delivery, the transfer from one person to another, of the rees or a right or interest therein, which means more than physical transfer of possession. Black's Law Dictionary, 4th ed., or naturalized, an adoption of an alien or foreigner via an oath of allegiance and not the pledge of allegiance. A naturalized citizen is a 8 U.S.C.S. Section 1401 subjugated citizen as a 14th Amendment born citizen. In the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof, lat serve serf or slave, are citizens of the United States and of the state state of consciousness, status or rank in society or municipal, muni capio political party and democracy state, wherein they reside. No state, not even the administrative municipal states, shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities or the citizens of the United States. These citizens of the United States are the preamble, natural born and allegiance citizens of one the AOC, Article 4, Section 1, 2, Preamble Posterity, the 3, United States Constitution, Article 4, Section 2, Clause 1, 4, the free inhabitants, freemen of the Republican form of government guaranteed to all constitutional states in the Union, and 5, 8 U.S.C.S., Section 1101A, 22, nor shall any state deprive any person, natural or artificial, Note the word citizen is not used of life, liberty, or property without due process of law within one of the many jurisdictions or different types of citizenships of the United States, i.e., preamble verse subject to, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction. There are different jurisdictions for different types of citizens in the U.S., the equal protection according to one's citizenship of the law. In order to better comprehend the word of art phrase and idiom, subject to the jurisdiction, we shall go to the United States Code Service, USCS Lawyer's Edition, Interpretive Note and Decisions, 1, 13th and 2, 14th and 342 USCS, Section 1981. 1. Prohibition Against Slavery. Mer and involuntary servitude. An obvious purpose of the 13th Amendment is to forbid all shades and conditions of African slavery. African slavery is not and has never been until recently Negro slavery. While Negro slavery, those who were supplanted completely about 6,000 years ago, see Genesis 2 4 20, part of the Neanderthal people. This is not Adam Cadman, but it is a man of the dust of the ground, alone only, was in the mind of Congress which proposed the 13th Amendment. It, the 13th Amendment, forbids any other, i.e. other than Negro slavery, property via seizure or contracts, kind of slavery now, 1865 present or hereafter. The question must be asked before the United Nations is why, how come Congress did not forbid Negro slavery in the 13th Amendment, nor voluntary slavery servitude? The answer is found in part in USCS L. Ed. to citizenship for generally. While the main purpose of the 14th Amendment was to establish CF the preamble that also establishes the posterity, who are the natural born and allegiance citizens of the United States citizenship of Negro, phrase subject to its another's or someone else's jurisdiction, the family of nations should be able to plainly comprehend that the idiom Negro, as codified by Congress, simply meant between 1865-66 as indicated within the 13th and 14th Amendments, a voluntary slave who is subject to the jurisdiction of another United States by way of being A. Conquered, B. Seizure or C. Contracts. Now we shall proceed to 8 U.S.C.S. for added clarity on the different types of citizens here in the United States.
8 U.S.C.S. Section 111A, 22A, a citizen, a preamble natural born and resident of the United States of America in the family of nations, is the principalized pre-entitled national of the United States. The word citizen used previously is not a corporation, but a citizen within the meaning of the United States Constitution, i.e. Article 1-7 and a citizen of the Republican states entitled to privileges and or immunities. See e.g. 8 U.S.C.S. Section 1503A of the 14th Amendment prohibiting any states from abridging privileges and or immunities of citizens of the United States. Also, neither the federal nor state governments are citizens. On the other hand, a corporation municipality is a person, artificial person or citizen, not entitled to rights, privileges, and immunities pursuant to the United States of America Constitution and the fundamental principles of the sovereign free inhabitants of the Republican form of state governments so written therein. All preamble and articles, one seven individual human beings who are natural born citizens, are ligious, liga and allegiance in alliance or by treaty. The preamble in United States Constitution with the United States of America government in the family of nations. 2. 8 U.S.C.S. Section 1101A. 22. B. A person, both natural and artificial, or native and alien, who, though not a citizen, preamble, Articles 1-7, entitled Natural Born, Allegiance, etc., of the United States owes, to bound or bind compulsory constraints also contractual, permanent, not subject to change allegiance to the United States in the family of nations, foreign or fon, the administrative corporation federal government of, in the United States government, the municipal corporate state governments in of the Republican state governments, and the municipal incorporation, cities, towns, etc., within the common law counties are not citizens of the United States. However, these persons owe permanent allegiance to the preamble and constitutional United States FON. This is also true of a permanent resident alien, PRA. A PRA does not have the right to vote and is not entitled to privileges and immunities within the constitutions. The PRA is one step up better than a 14th Amendment and 8 U.S.C.S. Section 1401 citizenship because he was not born in the USA and can return to the land of his birth. Sta. 8 U.S.C.S. Section 1401A. The following shall be nationals and citizens of the United States at birth, born delivered over to, one, a person born in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof. The word slave in Black's Law Dictionary, 4th ed. p. 1559, reads as follows. A person who is wholly subject to, permanently owes the will, one wishes, or a revocable contract of another. Please keep in mind that the word of art negro means subject to another's jurisdiction and slave means subject to another's will, and both describing the conditions of not being free white person opposed to free white person color, femme couleur libre. Femme couleur libre means, when properly translated, free colored people nation. Femme couleur libre. Up to the time of civil war, term applied to all persons not of the white race, including Indians. The Revolutionary War of America, RWA, is not the same as the War of Independence, WWOI. The RWA was fought for the recovery or return back to, for the most part, the Aboriginal Lenny Lenape Maros Moors. The term revolution is rooted in revolve or to come back to. The WOI was fought for the liberation of the European Mulatto Maros Moors or denizen proprietors. Neither of these combined actually freed the Caucasian white people, however, they did allow the European denizen proprietors and their descendants to become indigenous natives along with the aboriginal natives. First Americans, natural born, and the second Americans, Native Americans, or natural born, preamble citizens of the United States. A corporate federal government of the United States was completely in place by 1791 to mirror, however subordinate to, the Free Association Republic United States government. The federal corporation eventually included a vast number of preamble aboriginal citizens who erroneously and illegally joined with the preamble denizen citizen to violate their pre-revolutionary war agreements with their fellow Caucasian brethren and liberators. In Star Wars Episode 1, Anakim Skywalker, aka Darth Vader, represent the slave, S, who eventually destroy virtually, i.e., 
all of the former masters, those of the Republic, and who in return is destroyed and saved by his seed, Luke Skywalker, who was mixed with the bloodline of the Republic. This negative karma lead to the Civil War, Clone Wars Episode 2, or artificially created people fighting for freedom to set Caucasian white persons free, but instead of freeing the slaves, it enslaved the amalgamated free people by the ratification of the 13th and 14th Amendments and the Emancipation Proclamation. The slaveholding corporate states were defeated, and the property, Negro white persons, was seized and transferred over to the Federal Corporation United States for management. These Caucasian Negroes did not have a citizenship, and the Masonically guided United States representatives did not allow them to be congressionally naturalized in accordance with the United States Constitution, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 4 of 1787, not to be confused with the 14th Amendment naturalization of 1868, that is 81 years later. The term emancipation comes from the Latin word emancipatio and literally means to transfer or make over property. See e.g. Cassell's New Latin Dictionary, 1916, page de dents de the word property also means rights and slaves do not have rights. However, preamble and natural-born citizens who are not delivered over to, by way of contracts, do possess all preamble rights. The 13th and 14th Amendments and the Emancipation Proclamation are major sources in the illusion of freedom to the American public, and together they establish the transference of the white Negro. Property via seizure from the corporate states former colonies to the federal corporation and created a delusional avenue of freedom and liberty for the preamble amalgamated Mauros and Mulatto Moors, Aboriginal to America and the Mulatto and Morris, indigenous to America, both being the native natural-born citizens of the United States of America. This citizenship is no more than voluntary slavery via contracts. The Civil War did not, nor has any other war, free D, the slaves no matter what color they were or are, and it was never intended to do so. Today's modern day wars against terrorism, third world male dominated societies, etc., are not intended to eliminate the so called terrorism or anything else, however. These wars are designed, maintained, and controlled by the leaders of the so called good Christian Western nations and the black nobility of woad blood in their attempt to terminate mankind and the transformation and elevation of man into Umi Aliun. The following quotes are taken from Title 42 USCS Section 1981 and it is describing a what rights white Negro slaves have had since the Civil War to the present and b the rights of the amalgamated free inhabitants who unintentionally and unknowingly volunteered themselves and their offsprings to inherit the subjugated white Negro citizenship defined in Amendments 1327. This will be quoted in three different manners for a clearer understanding. The first shall be quoted without the prepositional phrase, the second to distinctly indicate the power of contracts, and thirdly the entire quote. One, all persons within the jurisdiction of the United States shall have the same rights as is enjoyed by white citizens and shall be subject to like punishment, pains, penalties. The word white white in law means punishment, pain, penalties, etc. Black's Law Dictionary, 4th ed. p. 1776, taxes, burdens, licenses, and exactions. The wrongful act of an officer or other person in compelling payment of a fee or reward for his services under the color, pretense, of his official authority when none is due. Two, all persons of the United States shall have the same rights in every state and territory to make and enforce contracts voluntary contractual slavery of the 14th Amendment regardless of your color, as is, now and was, enjoyed by white citizens. 3. All persons, artificial persons, corporations, aliens, etc., within the jurisdiction of the United States, shall have the same rights in every state and territory to make and enforce common law, contracts, to sue, be parties, give evidence and to the full and equal benefit of all laws and proceeding for the security of persons and property as is enjoyed by white citizens and shall be subject to enslaved to like punishment, pains, penalties, taxes, licenses, and exactions of every kind and to no other, as if there needs to be any other types of subjugation, 
We mentioned earlier above about being A. Conquered, B. Seized, or C. Contracted, and now we shall elaborate further as to how they relate to the different and constitutional unequal United States governments, i.e. E., the Republic versus Tsar, Tsar Sur, Caesar. The word Tsar Tsar means the Christ, and like the Roman Caesars, the administrative federal seizure Caesars is, to the masses of the American people, the anti-antichrist and Christ. The administrative United States in the United Nations emblem is the eagle vulture that preys on the weak, and this bald eagle is also a raptorial bird that seizes its prey with its claws and carries it up and away to its death. The word raptorial is the root word for Christian rapture, to rape and plunder. The rapture is not coming, it has came and gone two times in the past. Note, Caesar Caesar, Tsar or the Tsar, i.e. the Christ. The symbol for the Roman Empire of Caesar's time was the so-called eagle, and one of the traits of the eagle is to grasp, clutch or seize. A, the Federal Corporation of the United States was officially admitted to the Republic, Union in 1791, and headed by a subordinate constitutionally amend. 12th President, this corporate U.S. eventually attempted to completely usurp, impersonate and personate the sovereign Aboriginal, legitimate and Republic United States of America, belonging to the family of nations with its Article II President prior to and between 1898-1934. The corporate and bitter, like Wormwood conspirators, managed to substitute our original Republican democracy, the whole we, the people, for the illegal, unlawful, and non-constitutional Democratic Republic, for the political parties, i.e., the Democratic and Republican parties. Between 1929-45, with the empowerment of FDR's administrative government, the corporate U.S. government was all but eliminated while being absorbed by the administrative federal government of the U.S., 5 USCS, Section 7024, a.k.a. the Clean or Hatch Act, was eventually put in place by the administrative U.S. government that prohibits the federal, state, and local employees' officers from partaking lawfully in any active part in political management or in political campaigns as it pertains to the general national United States Republican form of government in the FON. By 1945-72, the federal corporation U.S. had been conquered by the Atomic Empire, now known as the Administrative Federal United States of America in the United Nations. B, from the 1929 stock market crash to the 1933 banking holiday, spelled the fall of the corporation U.S., and like any other monetary default asset, resources, property rights were forfeited and seized by the creditors, i.e. the constitutional United States government, the Treasury of the United States, for the preamble posterity of we, the people the constitutional citizens of the United States. In other words, the Corporation United States, as far back as the first magistrate CEO of the federal government. In the United States, or President George Washington borrowed money from its superior association United States for the United Colonies War of Independence that was still in delinquency and default up until 1929-34. The last president until May 1999 FDR ambiguously established a fourth branch department, Federal Administrative Government, a.k.a. The beast to seize the corporate and colonial assets, including property and rights that did eventually lead to the usurpation and the illegal temporary overthrow of the general United States government and the forced unlawful construction of the municipal governments, municipalities and municipal corporations to act instead of the superior United States government, and in most cases and times to act as the one and only United States government, including the states thereof. Assets, property of all kinds, real and personal, tangible and intangible, the entire property of a person, natural and artificial association, corporation, subject to the payment of his, her or its debts. Property. In the strict legal sense, an aggregate all or complete of rights which are guaranteed and protected by the government, i.e. all of a person's human, constitutional, common law, equitable, civil, statutory and municipal rights. In the United States legal system, we have preamble citizens with rights and 13th and 14th Amendment citizens without rights. All white Negroes, regardless of their color, are 13th and 14th Amendment citizens, subject to another's jurisdiction and is therefore 
lawfully considered assets and natural resources to be seized by the general government and managed by the administrative government, even though the general United States government is crossing the burning sands to get to Sankofa, the promised land or paradise. Lost white Negro citizenship is wrong, therefore, the administrative government must correct and eliminate said citizenships. See again the three predominant post-1929 factors in understanding the U.S. national administration and state municipal seizure of the rights properties of the American people, opposed to the people of the United States, are the 13th Amendment allowance of voluntary contractual slavery servitude, the 14th Amendment Negro phrase, subject to, the Emancipation Proclamation, the transfer of white Negroes, property from the slaveholding states to the keep of the general National Republican United States government and into the management and subordinate administrative national government of the U.S. for temporary keep via the corporate government of U.S. the Federal Corporation U.S. T8 U.S.C. Section 3215 and its corporate states 5 U.S.C.S. Section Section 150122 under the manage of the government of the United States IEE the minute and expanding administration U.S. government became primary basis for the present administration, IV U.S. government, AUSG, to eventually establish an unconstitutional fourth branch departmental agency, U.S. government, with its own national emblem. The square Illuminati pyramid and its own golden fringes U.S. flag, and the establishment of the 50 municipal state, 5 U.S.C.S. CK 1501, to political democratic party system. Even though it appears that the Constitutional and Republican States, USCS, Section 1501-1, have been totally replaced by the Municipal States, USCS, SEQ 1501-2, this is not true as it pertains to the preamble and free inhabitants of the United States of America in the FON. One of the codified and original meanings of the term municipal comes from the Latin, Augur Latimer's words, Uno, muni moenio capio, a capio, to entrap, allure, entice, to hunt for legacies, a fallacy, see cheat, deception, harm, lay hold of, catch it, capture and seize, be moenia munis munia, a public office that taxes and charges, a wall city of fortification or castle of the federal lords. See municipalis, provincial administration IVE government, under the control of a magistrate or military control, Cassell's New Latin Dictionary, CNLD. Dues, province, proxintia, government administrated by a magistrate and or military commander, origins. Imological Dictionary by Eric Partridge, OED, pay at 531. The terms mayor, major, magister, majesty, majestus, and magistrate comes from the old Moorish words, major, magis, ma eeg, or mech, white, mac, max, white, maximum, or greatest, see Black's Law Dictionary, 4th Ed and Master, OED, page 384. The term magistrate means person clothed with the power as a public civil officer or ministerial, ministerial. That which is done under the authority of a superior, that which involves obedience to instruction, but demands no special discretion, judgment, or skill. The magistrates, Suedo judges in America are military majors assigned by the quasi or covert martial law U.S. administrators aka agencies to seize, control and manage the business, properties and rights of the civilians, skilled and private, and the white Negro emancipated and contracted via the 13th and 14th Amendments to the United States Constitution. Agency. Properly speaking, agency relates to commercial or business transaction i.e. seizures, bankruptcies, etc. BLD 4th ed. P. Quart, paragraph 2, Agency of the United States, a department, division, or administration within the federal government, Black's Law Dictionary 6th ed. P. 63, Federal Governor, the system of government administrated in a nation formed by the Union or Confederation of several independent states. Constata 6, Clause 1, Latter Federis, and a league or compact between two or more states to become united under one central general government. See Federation, Black's Law Dictionary, Eddy 6 PI 61011. Federation, a joining together of nations in a league or association, an unincorporated association of persons for a common purpose, Black's Law Dictionary, 6th ed P 614. Association, 
unincorporated association, a confederation of individuals which is not chartered as a corporation. A voluntary confederacy. Black's Law Dictionary, 4th and 6th Eds. The previous stated United States of America federal government is the aboriginal sovereign preamble constitutional and legitimate we, the people government in the family of nations, however, there is an impersonator. Impersonate in criminal law. To assume the person, character of another, without his consent or knowledge, in order to deceive others. But while the men slept, general federal government, his enemy, corporate, administrative federal government, came and sowed, artificially construed tears, those laws that tears a society apart or separates or disunities amongst the wheat, those who have a divine and lawful right to complete and perfect preamble citizenship of the United States of America and its republican form of government in the family of nations. And everything then went his, the enemy, way. Matter 1325, and in such feigned character to fraudulently do some act or gain some advantage to the harm or prejudice of the person. Counterfeited. Black's Law Dictionary, 4th and 6th Eds. Corporation. An artificial person or legal entity created by or under the authority of the laws of a state, republican or nation, general. Black's Law Dictionary, 4th Ed, page 408, 28 USC, section 3002, 15A. United States means A, a federal corporation, B, an agency, department, commission, board, or other entity of the United States, federal agency. The Administrative Procedure Act defines the term agency negatively as being any U.S. governmental authority that does not include Congress, the courts, the government of the District of Columbia, the government of any territory or possession, court-martial or military authority. 5 U.S.C.A. Section 551, Black's Law Dictionary, 7th ed., page 63. By now, the United Nations understands there are two federal United States governments. I. The Free Association of Republican States, 5 U.S.C.S. Asiki 1511, confederated into a general United States government according to the law of nations, in the family of nations, as a trust. Lat fides or foedris op, to lat foeda or foda. 2. The subordinate and impersonating corporate municipal democratic states, 5 U.S.C.S. Section 1501-2, conspired confederated into administrative United States government in the United Nations as a trial, according to the illegal usurpation and impersonation, tribulation and initiation. This federal U.S. government comes from the Latin word fodere, meaning foul, horrible, abominable, beastly, dishonorable or disgraceful. It has been scripturally stated that the anti-I-Christ shall be mistaken, impersonation, for the cry east and my heavenly father who knows have in host, and illumination shown I, and that the Chris MSH, sons of God, as well as the Antichrist, John 2, 18, Antichrists are groups, and for the conscious and non-prejudiced citizens of the United States, the Savior's Trinity in law is the complete and perfect recovery of the one legislative, two, judicial, and the three, executive branches of the general United States government, and the complete and prefect loyalty and allegiance from the administrative Mamluks, Mystic Turks, Mirror, or in lieu of saviors, a legislative, b, judicial, and c, executive departmental or agency in the general or federal United States government. Lastly, and for more clarity, the following quotes are taken from Monuments of Washington's, Patriotism, 1789, P.P. Chavini Severa named 79. This day, the great illustrious Washington, the favorite son of liberty and deliverer of his, not our country, entered upon the execution of the office. Magistrate of the United States of America, His Excellency, attended by a committee, not members or representative of the Senate and House of Representatives, to Federal Hall. Note. United States Constitution, Article 1, Sections 9 and 10, Clause 8 and 1, respectively, does not allow for titles of nobility, not even for the King George, as the colonies would have had it. We, the Senate of the United States, congratulate you on the complete organization of the federal government of 1791 and your elevation to the office of president, an office by the powers constitutionally annexed to it, and extremely honorable from the manner in which the appointment, not chosen, selected, or elected, is made. 
The Law Latin, see Black's Law Dictionary, 4th Eddie, P. 1030, term, First Magistrate, is dubious and ambiguous and originally simply meant original magistrate or number one magistrate. The Honorable George Washington was A, their highest ranking public civil officer, chief executive officer, appointed by the preamble United States Republican form of government, B, elected via the Twelfth Amendment as President of the Federal Corporation United States and TC, the Chief Magistrate IE, e, the highest ranking civil service official in a government, President of the United States, the highest executive officer, employee of the Federal Corporation Administrative Government in the United States, Black's Law Dictionary, 4th and 6th Eds. Magistrate Washington's federal creation and powers are annexations and not constitutionally expressed. All civil officers are appointed, and all federal, corporate, administrative, or municipal presidents are civil officers. Number one, chief magistrates, and at the same time the CEO of the incorporated U.S. government constitutionally provided for and of a subordinate and enumerated nature. The president, vice president, constitution are two, not to be confused with president and advice, dash president, provided for in Amendment 12, and all civil officers of the United States shall be removed from office on impeachment. To gain a greater understanding of this previous quote, the United Nations family of nations needs to view Const Art 2 Section 1 Clause 6. In case of the removal of the president, the vice president, the Congress may by law provide for the case of removal, death, resignation, or inability, both of the president and vice president, declaring what officer civil service employee shall then act, perform as president impeachment of a civil officer, and such officer shall act accordingly, but they haven't, until the disability be removed or a art da. Two presidents shall be elected. The general government of the United States Constitution provides that the highest civil service officer appointed by one, the people of the United States and two, Suedo or quasi-elected via registered voters by the American Populist May Act, act as not real, temporarily according to the supreme law of the land, and no other. Today this is in complete and perfect violation of the United States Constitution, because all inabilities and disabilities have been removed, and a preamble prior entitled Natural Born Citizen is qualified and able to presume assume and resume the duties and responsibilities of the constitutional office of the President of, at L, the United States of America Republican form of government in the family of nations. It is important that the United Nations family of nations additionally understand overstand that George Washington was not the President of the United States of America so written in Art and Two of the U.S. Constitution. The Constitution was ordained and established prior to September 17, 1787, and George Washington became the first magistrate of the Federal Corporation in the USA in 1789. This subordinate and annexed USA management, management, government, and administration of a company, see Black's Law Dictionary, was admitted to the Preamble Republican Union February 18, 1791, as a new and entire member corporation provided for in Constitution, Art Deferred Section 1, Clause 2, Sentence 3, Providence Plantation. Note, as a new and entire member, the Federal Corporation United States Government is not a replacement government as taught by the leading experts. CEG, booklet entitled Our American Government, page 90, third paragraph, ed, 1993, issued by U.S. Government Printing Office. Plantation, a colony. Estate, colonial states opposed to republican states. In Article 2 of the United States Constitution, it clearly states that only one, a natural-born citizen, or two, a citizen of the United States that has resided at least 1414 years inter alia shall be eligible to the office, not executive or administrative office, of president. George Washington again became president in 1787-89 supposedly in the United States came, supposedly into existence between 1787-91, a total of four four years, but George Washington could not be a resident of 14 years because the United States of America came into existence around 1787. And even if he were a natural-born citizen, he would have to be natural-born 35 years back from 1787-91, 1752-56, respectively. 
the Federal Convention and Corporation United States of America did not come into existence until 1791, and the United States of America, under the United States Constitution, was not in existence 35 years back. Therefore, George Washington was not the president of the preamble and constitutional USA. In the book Famous First Facts by Joseph Nathan Kane, page 4495, it clearly indicates that the first president born a citizen, not natural born citizen, of the United States Federal Corporation was Martin Van Buren, 1837-41, born 1782, 1782 to 77-91 is only five to nine years and not 14 years. Not one of the Federal Convention's corporate, administrative, or municipal president's precedence is or was exception being Franklin D. Roosevelt and Article II President of the United States of America. The preamble, natural-born representatives and free inhabitant citizens of the United States of America in the family of nations, appointed George Washington to the executive office of the presidency in 1789. As first magistrate and CEO of the colonial plantation estates, the United Colonies he assumed took business control of the corporation, artificial and alien states of America, through his and others of the former 12 United Colonies mandator introductory into the Bay by Electoral College and House of Burgess. They learned how to construct elections or the selection of a federal corporation president according to Amendment 12 to the United States Constitution, being distinctly and constitutionally different from Constitution Art 2 and totally different than the federal administration presidential elections where the chosen political party member picks his own running mate, i.e. his vice president. Simply put, this is completely unconstitutional and fraud. The flag of the United States versus the flag of the US. The United Nations are fully aware that all true American citizens are identified by national, a nation's name versus personal, family, or land titles, such as Bay's and L's descent, a national name passed down, names to answer and apply to formally request or petition, i.e. declare and proclaim to the free national constitution of this free national republic of the United States of America. I'm depending on the United Nations, family of nations support to get them, the Moors or first Americans, AKA, natural born citizens of the United States, back to to regain the constitutional fold again, once had, that they, the descendants of the aboriginal free blacks African American of the United States of America, will learn to love instead of hate and will live according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, supporting our, mine, yours, and the Prophet's free national constitution of the United States of America. I love my people and I desire unity and mine, back to there the natural-born Moorish citizens of the United States, own free national and divine standards because day by day they, Leni Lenape, we the people, have been and continue to do so, violating the national and constitutional laws of their, the Moorish ordained and established United States government by claiming names and principles that are unconstitutional. For without a free national name, without a descant flag of our forefathers, there is not a national divine title, deed of the United States government in the family of nations, in which we, blacks, Negro, African Americans, Hispanic, Latino, and Asian Americans, i.e. Moors, you, me, and him live. It is clearly stated and should be noted that our American prophet indicated that the Constitution of the United States of America and the United States government thereof is our free national constitution and Republican government. And in order to gain, i.e., I regain the title of the government in which we, the first Americans, Leni Lenape Moors of preamble and posterity descendants live, we must have one, a free national name, that is to say, the free national republic of the United States of America because there is no free nation now on this earth called Bay and EI and no Moorland and two, a descent flag of our forefathers in which we live, i.e. the forefathers or founding fathers of the United States of America Republican government. Simply put, in order to regain the preamble and natural born citizenship, the posterity, poster child who has once lost and now know their whereabouts, must present the proper papers, the legitimate national name and the ancestral flag to inherit the land or regain the kingdom, which we are now before this body nations, family of nations, within our original form. 
The term flag simply means an established or perfected emblem or symbol constructed, ordained, and enacted by a person or people to basically represent them or their nation. The second pledge of allegiance of the preamble and natural-born citizens of the United States is, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic, not democracy, for which it stands, one nation, one people, we the people opposed to a political party, democratic versus republican, indivisible, complete, perfect, whole, full, and inseparable anti-party system with liberty and justice for all. CEG 36 USC 172. The family of nations should note in the previous quote, the words under God are omitted because the second pledge for preamble citizens did not nor does not include those words. C36 USCS section 1961 History 1954 Act June 14 inserted under God. The word of art terms under God and in God we trust, the Federal Administration's national motto of July 30, 1956. 36 USCS section 186 is not referring to the unopposable force nor the God of small and closed-minded religious people. However, it is both the scriptural and Masonic God of Government, Government, Ordinance and Department of Justice, a.k.a. Guma, Oz Uz and Debar Giyudi. The eye of God providence of the dollar bill is not in itself negative nor evil, however. It is one eyed or incomplete, and therefore it is an initiator of pain. The free unincorporated association of the United States of America, Republican form of governments in the family of nations, and according to the law of nations, private, national, and official flag of the United States was statutorily enacted, adopted June 14, 1777 by our founding forefathers of the United States in Congress, assembled dubiously called the Continental Congress. CEG 36 USCS section 157. The lawful description of the official flag of the United States is found in 4 USCS chapter 1 section 1 as follows. The flag of the United States shall be 13 horizontal strips, alternated red and white, and the Union, Canton, and not Union Jack, of the flag shall be 48 stars, white and blue field. The administrative Federal Republic in Central North America, see the World Encyclopedia of Flags by Alfred Znamirovsky, Pub Hermes House, Baj 192's Aka A. The American or U.S. flag and B, Star Spangled Banner, is a mutation of the colonial or these United Colonies flag around 1775. It was called the Grand Union flag, and its canton or union was identical to the English Union Jack of 1606-1801. In or about October 1777, approximately four months after June 1777, the enactment of our national and official flag of the United States, or USCS Chapter 1, Section 1, the Federal Corporation U.S. representatives and overseers of the United Colonies began to officially use, for them, the so-called Betsy Ross design, but the Congress passed no resolution adopting it. The colonial corporate United States banner flag from October 1777 to 1794 displayed 15 stripes and 15 stars. The Flag Act of April 4, 1818, officially and permanently, allowed only 13 stripes of their national ensign to imitate our national flags, 13 stripes. Also, in 1898, President Monroe stipulated that their flag stars should be arranged in parallel rows. They officially adopted this arrangement in 1912, four years after our republican form of government was usurped by the corporate and capitalistic democratic form of government. The administrative federal government initiated after 1929 modified the 1818-1912 flag and officially named their flag as the Star Spangled Banner and their national anthem. See 36 USCS section 117. The federal administrative US government official flag banner is not an enactment of the Congress, but it is the product of presidential executive orders. It is located under 4 USCS. History Sections 1-3 as follows. The flag of the United States shall have 13 horizontal strips, alternated red and white, and a union consisting of white stars on a field of blue. The position of the stars in the union of the flag and in the union jack shall be indicated of the attachment to this order. 
Please note the term Union Jack because it is a connecting factor to the first and former English Union Jack used by these United Colonies and the Federal Corporate United States. Also in this same Executive Order Part 2, Section 23, Sentence 2, it clearly indicates that there are two national flags. The size of the Union Jack flown with the their present one national flag shall be the same as the size of the Union. Our national flag without the Jack of that other national flag. Before we proceed further, there is one key factor the family of nations must understand concerning the description of both flags and that is the non-description of the stars. Neither of the so-called official description of the flags tell us what kinds of stars shall be on the flags, i.e. five-pointed, six-pointed or otherwise. The absence of the description of the stars on both flags is no accident, but a deliberate attempt to keep the one people of the United States of America and two, the American people in confusion and ignorance as to what's what and who's who. The following quote from Grace R. Cooper on page one in her book, 13 Star Flags, can be an eye-opener pertaining to the major cover-ups that occurred in the 1800s about the myths of the Betsy Ross flag or the five pointed stars on the flag of the United States. This book of necessity discounts a few myths. Unfortunately, much of our American history was clouded by zealous 19th century 1800s imaginations. The American flag and its five pointed stars. As pointed out earlier, the American flag is called the Old Glory, Star Spangled Banner, etc., and is the official banner flag of the duplicate and mirror administrative government of and in the United States described in 4 USCS Chapter 1, History, Part 1, Section Numbers 1 and 2. When viewing their flag, it can be clearly noted that the stars within the Blue Union Jackfield are five-pointed stars, or what symbolist and emblist know as mullets. The mullet comes from fossilized stones in the shape of five-pointed stars in the Midland Shires of England and the ancestral land of George Washington. The mullets, aka Goatfish, is part of the coat of arms of the man who is credited in creating the Federal Corporation US government and saving the unions. The five-pointed star, rooted in five, has a meaning of union or unity regardless of the numbers involved. The mullet can also be considered or substituted for a six-pointed star called Estuel. However, a spur five-pointed star cannot. In a book titled Our Flag, page 19 indicates that Washington family determines the original design of Our Note. This does not say the flag of the United States flag. If the claim that the stars mullets in the American. Note again, this is not saying the flag of the United States flag was suggested by the stars. Mullets represented in Washington's coat of arms is in fact true. It means that the stars, mullets, came from the bottom of the sea, sea starfish, instead of from the sky. It seems that on the surface of the soil in Midland Shire of England, where Washington's ancestors lived, People often found small, five-pointed, star-shaped stones, fossilized crinoids, or sea lilies. The five-pointed star, like the sea, not only gives life, but also takes life. That is to say, the five-pointed star inverted can additionally mean destruction or also called evil. The five-pointed star, furthermore, is a symbol of emotions and most emotional people are off-balanced or not too well-grounded. The goatfish, goat and fish or mullet, can also be a symbol of Judas goat and Jesus fish, or the negative versus the positive, the whip, or the carrot, aka the flail or the staff. I have found no official historical documents, information, or otherwise where the Congress assembled has authorized any five-pointed stars, mullets to be placed on the flag of the United States, nor the official seal of the United States, USCS, Section 41. There is dubious information that around 1777, the legendary Betsy Ross designed a duplicated flag of the United States using the mullet's five-pointed stars of the coat of arms from General George Washington's family, which was considered a revolutionary innovation in the flag of the United States. Revolutionary? Overthrow of a government or social system with another taking its place. Webster's New World Dictionary, page 6 and 37. The Betsy Ross flag has the arrangement of 13 stars. Mullets in a circle on a blue field with 13 red and white stripes alternating. In a book entitled The World Encyclopedia of Flags, updated 2002, Hermes House, page 1 and 13, 
it states that her flag designed with mullets, five pointed stars, was a revolutionary innovation in flag design. Why was the new introduction of the five pointed stars so revolutionary or a major change in the flag S used at that time? In the same book, her flag, along with Francis Hopkinson's five point stars arranged in a staggered row, are both historically the revolutionary designers. But officially, Francis Hopkinson assisted Charles Thompson, the Secretary of the United States in Congress, assembled in the creation of the Sigillum Magnum Republicae Confederatae Americae Trans. The seal of the Great Republican Union of America, or the Great Seal of the United Republic of America, and the added legends, the Great Seal of the United States, constructed in 1935 by FDR Hopkinson, who is officially credited for having designed the flag of the United States enacted in 1777, they only and officially used six-pointed stars, estuile in the 1777 flag of the United States. See the Great Seal of the United States U.S. Government Printing Office, page 3. The following is taken from pages 2 and 3 of the Great Seal of the United States. The first committee struggled unsuccessfully with biblical and classical themes, including the children of Israel. The second committee, in March 1780, asked Francis Hopkinson, the gifted Philadelphian, who had designed the American flag to serve as their consultant. They too failed to create an acceptable seal, but influenced by the flag adopted in 1777, they contributed to the final design, 13 red and white strips, the constellation of 13 six-pointed stars. The above quotes are keys in unlocking the authentic and official description and design of the types of stars. Estoile on the flag of the United States of America, enacted June 14, 1777 by the United States in Congress assembled, because that flag is still the private, sovereign, national and official flag of the United States Republican form of government in the family of nations, pursuant to, but not limited to, 4 U.S.C.S. Chapter 1, Section 1. The family of nations is asked to view again the following quote taken from 4 U.S.C.S. Chapter His Part 2. The size of the Union Jack, from which the corporate administrative government in the United States government came from, flown with the national flag, shall be the sum as the size of the Union, Canton, of that June 14, 1777, United States of America Republican form of government national flag. Additional information concerning what types of stars were used during the construction of our national and official Moorish flag can be found on pages 126-127 as follows. The engraver's treatment of the stars requires further comment. As noted, each star is six-pointed, and each has straight points and what is generally known as a Star of David shape. There can be no question that this was intentional and that it had Thompson's approval. Throughout the development of the seal, device stars with six points or more had been used in the preliminary drawings by Hopkinson, by Barton, and by Thompson himself. On the question of points of stars, Barton's heraldic knowledge may have been called upon. Gilliam's display of heraldry, with which Barton was familiar, used the word star as a symbol for estoile. Gilliam used the term mullet for five I pointed. It may be noted that stars with six points were common in the early history. Now we must return to the World Encyclopedia of Flags and analyze the following I quotes on page 113. There is no mention of the size of the union, the canton, or the shape or configuration of the stars. In fact, from that date, June 14, 1777, there were two different designs for the canton of the American national flag. The so-called Betsy Ross design has the stars mullets arranged in a circle, while Francis Hopkinson's design shows the stars, estoile, arranged in parallel staggered rows. The following is the historical lie. In both cases, the stars were five-pointed. We have seen that Francis Hopkinson used only six-pointed stars as stoil and is officially credited with designing the enacted June 14, 1777, flag of the United States in Congress assembled. It has also been stated that the historic American flag of the legendary Betsy Ross, with its five-pointed stars, mullets were taken from General George Washington's coat of arms, additionally came in historic use in 1777. What does this mean? It means that there are two national flags in the United States. 
one being the authentic, private, sovereign, national and official flag of the United States of America, Republican form of government, in the family of nations according to the law of nations, authorized, established and enacted, June 14, 1777 by the United States in Congress, assembled and was designed by, for the most part, Francis Hopkinson with its six-pointed estoyal stars, the other being the historical, unauthentic, public, national and official banner flag of the United States in America, democratic form of government in the United Nations according to international law, unauthorized, circulated and displayed in October 1777 by the 13 United States of America and was designed by the legendary Betsy Ross with its five pointed stars, mullets. We must at this time reiterate the following facts for the family of nations of the United Nations. 1. The unincorporated free association of the United States of America. Republican form of government, a.k.a. a. The United States of America in General Congress assembled. b. The United States in Congress assembled. c. The United States government belonging to the family of nations. and d. The preamble and constitutional United States of America with its three-branch government headed by the Congress of the United States pursuant to Article 1 of said Constitution, 1. Pronounce the authentic a declaration by the representatives of the United States of America in General Congress assemble in Congress July 4, 1776 that officially started the Revolutionary War. 2. Enacted the official flag of the United States June 14, 1777 with its star of David's six-pointed stars and 3. Established the Sigilla Magna Republic Confederate America, the seal of the Mayors people united in America, aka the Great Seal of the Confederate, Union Republic of America, i.e. the official seal of the United States pursuant to 4 U.S.C.S. Section 41. This is the pre-entitled qualified Hakda, free inhabitant and natural-born citizenship of the United States. We reclaim, proclaim, declare, record and implement via the Fars and Hach. Two, the former or pre-1929-1945 Federal Corporation, United States of America Democratic Form of Government, a.k.a. A. The United Colonies. B. These United Colonies. C. The Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled, and the 13 United States of America being the unconstitutional preamble and articles. 173 departmental governments of the U.S. headed once by said Congress that 1. Attached or piggybacked the Declaration of Independence to our A Declaration that officially started the War of Independence when historically joined and understood they are called THE American Revolution. 2. Unofficially enacted and displayed the historic star of Washington's five-pointed stars, October 1777, and constructed the illegal Great Seal of 1841. These denizens or subjects were once known as natural-born citizens, and were also once congressionally naturalized via United States courts after two years for civilians. Thra, the administrative federal republic in Central North America, World Encyclopedia of Flags, page L92, United States of America, municipal form of government, a.k.a. A, the Democratic and Republican Party government, B, the indivisible government, C, documents and readings in American government, pages 608, 610, C, the fourth branch of government, C, separation of powers and the independent agencies, cases and selected readings, Library of Congress, 1969, pages 383, and D, the Fed's fairs, headed by an unconstitutional president and subordinately controlled by the joint committees of the Congress, who having actually and effectually taken over the task of fulfilling the one Declaration of White Independence on October 8, 1898, in the coup d'etat initiating in Wilmington, North Carolina, two, raised the administrative commercial and bankruptcy flag of the United States between 1929-1935 with its presidential arrangement of stars, mullets, fringes and dimensions, see 4 USCS Chapter 1, Interpretive Notes and Decisions, 1980 edition page 895, and the crested eagle, the phoenix, draco or maru in finial of the flag. More about the Moorish eagle below, and 3. 
The Great Seal of the United States of 1935-1986 with its crested eagle. All citizens of this government are subjects to another's jurisdiction and are contractual white Negroes or property of the state wherein they reside, regardless of your color. Lastly, our research has found it was alleged in June 1776, a committee of three persons, Robert Morris, Colonel George Ross, and Washington, seemed to have distinct idea of what he wanted in the design of a new flag of the United States. He, Washington, had already had a crude design of a flag with 13 six-pointed estoiles, stars within alternating red and white stripes. At Mrs. Betsy Ross's suggestion, the stars would be five-pointed. Her skill with needlework was to give birth to the very first stars and stripes. This story has had enormous popularity, yet there are facts that suggest that Betsy Ross may not have had anything to do with the flag, adopted June 14, 1777. The claims that Betsy Ross created the first American flag were made public in 1870 by one of her grandsons. However, there was never any record of the flag being discussed or of a committee being appointed for the design of the flag in either the journals of the Continental Congress, United States and Congress assembled, or the diaries and writings of Washington. Meeting with Colonel Ross or Robert Morris on the subject cannot be documented. Here follows another historical lie. Nevertheless, the design was accepted and adopted by Congress on June 14, 1777. However, there is no historical evidence that a flag or the flag of the United States enacted June 14, 1777 by the United States in Congress assembled used or accepted a flag designed with 13 stars on it or any five pointed stars at all. The official seal of the United States, 4 USCS Chapter 2, Section 41, the seal heretofore used by the United States in Congress assembled is declared to be the seal of the United States. The previous quote is active and positive law today, 2004, and there is no such word as great mentioned above. Also, the seal that was in use between 1782 and 1841 by the United States in Congress assembled, and not the Congress of the United States of 1787, nor the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled, 1789-1841, is presently and lawfully the only official seal of the United States. Therefore, the family of nations of the United Nations must ask the following questions. 1. What is the origin and proper name of the seal heretofore used by the United States in Congress assembled? It is stated in the Eagle and the Shield, Ian and Sheesh, pages 93-94. The eagle, Phoenix Dragon, with a shield on its breast was not characteristic of English heraldry. The eagle, Dragon Phoenix, and shield device, however, was a well-established convention of continental heraldry and had been for many centuries 29. Illustration 16, a Spanish textile fragment dating from the first half of the 12th century, 1100s, is included to show the antiquity of continental devices that developed into a modem heraldic eagle with a shield on its breast. The word continental is certainly indicating the continent of Europe, however, the oldest and noble royal heraldry consisting of an eagle, phoenix, dragon, or crest cox eagle, and a shield found in Europe, i.e. 1. Britain, including what has now become known as England, 2. France, 3. Dutch, 4. Belgium, 5. Italy, 6. Poland, 7. Germany, 8. Holland, 9. Portugal, 10. Spain. This European, Indo-European Indy, or Moorish European, is found distinctly and clearly showing the head or beginning of the family coat of arms. There is a Mauros, sable, black, or Moorish complexion, coffee hue man, and for the most part, as it pertains to the shields, they are virtually the type S of shields that have been duplicated or replicated with minor changes found on the seal of the United States used by the United States in Congress assembled Usica. As for the crest eagle phoenix dragon and the six pointed stars, there is no doubt that the phoenix eagle of the 1782 magnum seal of the United States is the source from whence the design and image was copied. The royal and noble names found on these coat of arms are Morrison, Moreilly, Morand, Morienne, Morizzi, Mareschi, Moretti, Saracean, Negro, Grafmir, Mor, etc. All of the preceding information and more can be located in the book entitled 
Nature Knows No Color Line by J.A. Rogers, pages 83-86. Furthermore, I have previously indicated above that the Moresh, Moorish people have no recorded beginnings and that the Mauro S people ruled the entire world for untold ages. The word continental comes from the Latin, or Latimores, word continuo or continentia and continuatio, meaning self-control or contained and uninterrupted or unbroken respectively, i.e. a self-contained unbroken succession without interruption. Therefore, the coded word of art continental can indicate the coat of arms that goes back at least 25,000 years when the pole star Draco fell from heaven and is destined to rise as the phoenix or bar crest aquila opposed to the American bald eagle. There is no such term as Continental Congress in law or official documentation as it pertains to our flag, seal or constitution. The Continental Congress of which the Bays were the early presidents and governors of the pre-1772 and old United States of the Americas is none other than the United States in Congress assembled or and the Congress of the United States de jure, opposed to de facto. The United States of America, Republican, non-political party system, form of government in the family of nations, is far older than the United States of America, democracy political party system, form of government in the United Nations. What is the actual and lawful decryption of the 1762 seal of the United States? The description of the seal can be seen described in several books and works. However, we shall be drawing principally from one, the Great Seal of the United States, GSUS, by the U.S. Printing Office of 1996, and two, the Eagle and the Shield. The nations of families of the United Nations should be advised that we, at this time, shall only be exploring certain aspects of the seal of the United States, specifically the obverse side, and primarily the six-pointed star, S, and the crest eagle, Feng Huang, Phoenician dragon. A picture of an actual, lawful, and original obverse or coat of arms seal is displayed on P8 of the GSUS and a description of its design from pages 4-8. The most striking and important features are that it has, one, a phoenix's body, two, dragon crest, three, Moorish shield, Rothschilds, Rashid, and four, a six-pointed star made up of 13 smaller six-pointed stars. One, the phoenix bird or thunderbird is none other than a form of Kulkukan, Quetzalcoatl and Maru, Moru I, of the Olmecs, Aztecs, Mayans, Toltecs, Zuni, Anasazi, Leni Lenape, Monacans, etc., of the ancient Americas. The word Phoenix is rooted in the word Phoenicians, Phoenicians, and the term Phoenician comes from the old Moorish, zero mister, word Muir, therefore, Murex, Murex, Murus, Murs, Moors, can mean purple, dye, or purple royal people. The Phoenicians are none other than the Canaanite or Kananu. The Phoenician, Phoeni, Phoeni, Finals, Finial, called themselves A. Moor T. W. Marit as a national name, i.e., and simply put, people of the Maumish Empire, and B. Canaanites, that is to say, from the land of milk and honey, or more correctly put, place of commerce. In other words, the Phoenicians' nationality was Moorish, being equivalent to preamble citizens of the United States, and their geographical eastern country was Kanaan. The word QK Ana Anu being equivalent to calling ourselves Americans, even though there is no such country or nation as America. The biblical land of Canaan is not a literal location, and the Hebrew word Kalkana. Canaan actually means to bend the knees, submit to God or bow down to Anu or priest of heaven, and merchants, those who buy and sail or occupied by commerce. In Kemet, Egypt, their nationality was TMRY Demori or Tamari. The Moors and they ruled the geography or landmass called KMT Kemet, meaning in part place of praise, elevated land, raised up people, or another double placed territory of the pyramids' mounds. Little known to the general public, the Moors A, first Americans, Aboriginal, and B, the second Americans, Native Americans, or Indians, were once called Canaanites, i.e., the cursed seed of Canaan by the zealous church theologians who tried to exterminate U.S. in order to regain the land between the 1600s-1790s. 
the old Americas and ancient Africa, not the present-day landmass called Africa, has always been the breadbasket of the world, the land of commerce, emporos, or the land of Canaan. This esoteric connection between America, the Mark or Exeunt, Cross or Christland, has a lot to do with and has been influenced by the ebb and flow of the Ice Ages of the past. Also, when the Chaze prophet, Noble Drew Ali, initiated the divine and national movement of North America for the recovery of the Moors or citizens of the United States of America. Republican form of government in the family of nations via the Our Free National Constitution of the United States of America, he did so by first establishing the Canaanite Temple in Newark, New Jersey or Camden, New Jersey. Our American prophet knew exactly what he was doing. The phoenix is a symbol of resurrection or revolution and an emblem for the Messiah or Christ. The words Messiah, M-S-H, and Christ cursed are idioms for the Moorish legendary and biblical Moabites or the great and corrupted mummification civilization that issued out of A.F. Moritzie over 100,000 years ago. These Moorish sons and daughters are the Mermen Merlin and Menades Sirens of old. The Moabite Moorish Moorish Empire is not the oldest Moorish Moorish Empire as thought and taught by most Moorish nationals who are nouns. The word Moab it, comes from the Hebrew term Emwab or Semen Patris, father sperm, and modernly translated to Moab. However, MWAB can also mean vizier or administrator who originated from the waters or the sea. Water sea can also represent the celestial dimension or space. Two, Draco or the Dragon Crest coat of arms is also a codified part of the Magna Seal Penix of 1782. The dragon is an icon for the Mori people according to the history of the ancient world. Like the Phoenix Crest Eagle, it can survive in the fire or flames in order to protect the treasures or to bring forth abundance and new life. This is equivalent to Jesus, Isa Joshua or LSA, pronounced and translated to Ion, Oin, Wait, O, Osa or Osiite, Osiris, I-E-E, -E, the resurrected sun, sun or fire god, symbolized by peacock, Ben Ben, Benny El, Peniel or Finial, Finial, entering into hell or the grave and setting the captives free. And the graves were open and many bodies of the saints, abundance and precious treasure which slept, arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Matt 27, 52, 53. This of course is the legendary first resurrection that has nothing to do with the common folk or masses and everything to do with the 144,000 mentioned in the book of Revelation's Revolution. Draco in the Bible, 0T in one form, is Seraphim, a flying lizard or reptile serpent or fiery serpent. The fiery serpent is called the Flying Dragons and is a divine administrator of God. In another biblical form, they are called K Cherubim or dragon and griffins close to God. The griffins are also depicted as serpents, i.e. brazen serpents. The term serpent in Hebrew is NHS, Nawash, that comes from the Moorish, M-R, E-G, Naich Su, and means divine, Sudani Satanu, Negro Mauros, watches of copper and coffee complexion with the power to overcome one's own consciousness, to prognosticate, to learn, be experience, and to diligently observe. To know via of observance is science and high science to the public is termed magic. The Moors were once called the Black Dragons of China, the serpents that St. Patrick ran out of Ireland, and the Dragon of British law. Webster's Dictionary also defined them, the North American Moors, as predominantly Negro, some part Native American and a wit bit Caucasian. Webster's Dictionary also defines the term Moor as follows a member of a dark-skinned people of mixed Arab and Berber ancestry inhabiting ancient Mauritania in North Africa, Moroccan, Mormon, Blackamoor, one of the groups of people of mixed Indian, white and Negro ancestry in central Delaware, compare Nanticoke, as stated above the misnomer Delaware Indians were actually the Lenape Lenap, Lenape or the Kinky or Spiro Spira or Spirited Head Ones. William Penn describes the Lenape as black as gypsies. The word gypsies in law is termed Egyptian, which Maud Lat translated for the phrase KMT or Kemet 
or Kem Eichels or Alchemy or Elohim God, Genasun Nomwan, EACQs, or Black Magic. Keep in mind all ancient sacred words and valid scriptural words have at least seven seven different meanings or ways to translate or relate them. The present day Delaware Native Americans are not aware of their true ancestry, the first Americans and the indigenous Americans, even though they often refer to themselves as Leni Lenape, who are the direct posterity of the Aboriginal Americans, they have disconnected and do disassociate themselves with the Moorish and Preamble citizens of the United States and the traditional Moorish nationals. If they do not, within a prescribed period of time, claim and respect their principal heritage, they will be setting up the conditions of being disinherited when the Phoenix Thunderbird rises. This additionally includes most of the so-called Native Americans. The Phoenix, Ian's, is the resurrected one, S, and is the only one of its, their kind, and is a Greek griff symbol for Jesus, the only begotten son. Now let us explore John 1.18 and Hebrews 11.17. Hebrews 1, 17. By faith, Abraham offered up his only begotten son. On page 1738 of the Hebrew Greek Key Study Bible, HBG Keys B, of the King James Version, 1984, by Own World Bible Publishers Inc. states, the term monogenes, only begotten, also occurs in Hebrews 11, 17. The genos from which monogenes is derived means race, stock, family and not single individual. John 1, 18. No man hath seen God at any time. The AA only be begotten, see son, hath declared him. The phrase only monobegotten genius son huios is a biblical word of art and can be decoded from the following quotes taken from the Greek English lexicon of the New Testament. Greek English lexicon, 1925 by William F. Arndt, Pub University of Chicago Press, pages 529, 153, 155, and 840, respectively. Mono only means isolated, deserted, or alone, and never single. Genes begotten means family, descent, clan, race, kind, and generation, and those descended from a common ancestor, posterity, and not virgin birth. See, Huyo's son means a pupil, follower, or one who is a spiritual son, and the sons of the gods. Also in the Hebrew Greek SB, pages 1763-64, the word son huios is defined in part as used metaphysically of prominent moral characteristics, legitimate offspring, descendant, irrespective of the gender. Huios gives evidence of the dignity of one's relationship and likeness to God's character. The Greek ten huios is taken from the OMSA Hebrew words bn, bnh, BNY and via Gemara, Gematria, or Abijad, Abijid, i.e., the science of letters interchanging with other letters and numbers to expand or clarify words, phrases, and scriptures, BYN. BNBIN means sons and daughters, as in the sons of God saw the daughters of men, Gen 6 2 and not males. BN Ben also means Builders, nations, anointed, stewards, appointed ones, and via numbers Bay and Bayanu, that is clear, manifested, and plain proof, signs, demonstration, and evidence. Therefore, the sons, BNY Huyos of gods, are those individuals and nations people who are anointed or appointed as stewards of God, and by their godlike characteristics, via service and sacrifice, who demonstrate clear and evident proof while building the kingdom of heaven and the unity of man right here on earth in this lifetime. In the Greek English lexicon, page 529, it is stated, Monogenes of the mysterious bird, the phoenix, three, the Moorish Mori shield and the phoenix eagle and six pointed stars of the 1782 United States Great Seal can be found in its many parts of its European predecessors on pages 83, 85, 88 and 106 of nature Knows No Color Line, NKNC, by J.A. Rogers. It has been publicly uttered, although I haven't seen any proof that the shield on the U.S. dollar is the shield of the black nobility family, the Rothschilds, and that they are possibly the head of the world banking conspiracy, the New World Order, and the Illuminati. The word or name Rothschilds Mayor come from the term Rothschilds, however, the old Moorish emperos merchants of Bretagne, British Empire, were designated Rashid Rashid, 
an epithet of the leading commercial giants of W Europe. There are two or possibly three shields used by the administrative federal Great Seal of the United States. The obverse side and shield of the 1904, 1986 and or present day display on the US dollar greatly differs as it pertains to our 1782 seal as a hold and slightly so concerning the shield and there are apparently differences between the federal administration. Obverse side of their great seal and the others even though this may be due to the apparatus. The 1782 United States Great Seal S, in brief, Eagle is a crest phoenix with 13 six-pointed stars over Draco's head and its shield top part the chief appears to have 12 blue lines and 11 white lines and the bottom major portion 13 vertical stripes alternating white and red. Note, the 12 blue strips may represent Bin Israel and the 11 white strips the 11 sons of Canaan making this the land of Canaan. The 1904 American bald eagle appears to have no crest on the head. It has 13 five-pointed stars arranged in the form of a five-pointed star. The top part of the shield, the chief, also appears to be striped or alternating lines. The 1986 or the present Great Seal indicated on page 11 in the Great Seal of the United States is the American bald eagle with a phoenix cock crest. The present eagle on the dollar bill appears to be identical to the 1904 eagle, except that the chief top white line is thicker than the other, and the eagle has a small crest. Please keep in mind while viewing NKNC that the Magna Seal of our USA was designed for our nation in the West by Westerners and for Westerners. 4. The 13 six-pointed star not only can represent the original claim to the BEY, Israel or those who have clear proof of being the posterity of Israel, i.e. -E, Maru Hebrew, people of the cross, Marka Marika, but also the one Messiah plus the 12 nations of Israel 13 and belonging to the star house of David, TUT here. In the Arabic Quran, it talks about the power of 19 or over it, and this number is considered mystical and important in unlocking part of the great knowledge and spiritual insight of the Quran. 19 is also a key factor in the principal citizens of the United States of America, the Knight of Power or Honor. In the name of ALH, most gracious, most merciful, we, the group of light beings, have indeed revealed this revelation in the night of power, in honoring. The replenishing on the sixth day, Genesis 1.28, is actually the thirteenth day of the previous cycle or world. Please keep in mind the creation story has seven days. The administrative government's eagle seal and flag has five pointed stars for their symbols and our phoenix crest eagle and flag is designed with six pointed stars. Before we proceed in unlocking information concerning the six-pointed star as there must be a better comprehension of the five-pointed star S in connection with the codified number 13. Anyone members of the family of nations of the United Nations who is familiar or studies basic English numerology should be aware that there is a saying in the West that 13 is an unlucky number and yet 13 is constantly reported over and over on both seals and both flags of the United States. According to Mesoteric Masonic information from 1776 to 1945, completed 13 cycles of 13 years, thereby adding 13 and 13, 169 to 1776, weighed 1945, fulfilling a particular purpose. My legal staff and I have uncovered that this specific time period orchestrated the rise of the outcast sons, the common Caucasian white persons, the phoenix eagle on the seals represents this period. The 13 six and five pointed stars arranged in the form of a six pointed star on the obverse side represents a new cycle of six gets 13 and five gets 13 that is connected or completed, perfected with the reverse side of the seal, the Republican elongated pyramid and the democracy square pyramid in its gross or distorted form. From 1932-45, 13 years time frame, the FDR administration established, reinforced, or expanded. The Administrative Departmental Agency Government of the U.S., the National, Federal Administration, Municipal, State, and Local County Involuntary Bar Association, ABA, etc. The Federal Reserve Banking System and its agencies, subject to the Treasury of the United States. 1. The Cleaner Hatch Act. 2. The Great Seal of the United States. 3. The War and Police Power Acts. 4. Etc. In addition, the above, 
ushered in the atomic and scientific cycles and initiated the beginning of the United States becoming the world's financial empire and the major police superpower of today. Frank D. Roosevelt's administration also directly or indirectly authorized the Crested Eagle and the Vexiloid Phoenix's Eagle commonly used as the finial for indoor flags and post-1929 United States courts and the courts of the United States. Also, FDR announced the New Deal and reinforced the usage of the five-pointed stars. The six-pointed star, like the eight-pointed star, is always balanced when looked at from six angles. The number six in the negative represents lower mind, carnal consciousness, incompletion, etc. In the study of stars, my staff and I have found out that the five-point star mullet often substitutes for the estuile six-pointed star. Today, the five-point star as mullets have been taken for the real thing. Both the United States of America Constitution and United States Codes allows for civil service officers to act in the general United States Republican form of government for a predetermined time, subject to predetermined conditions. The present U.S. government displaying the Great Seal with 13 five-pointed stars in the form of a six-pointed star, the hybrid Cox Eagle, the square, Egyptian pyramid with the left eye of Horus Haru, and 50 stars on their Union Jack may be the Antichrist. The word anti is from the OMR, Latin, and is also spelled anti. Anti or anti both mean before, in place of and against, and superstitiously taken for or mistaken for. The civil servant officials of the United States, Sigilla Magna Republicae Confederatae Americae, trans, the seal of the Mayores Moorish Republican Union of America, did not stay true to their word, to their oath of loyalty, nor to their pledge of allegiance, however, by Hak and Hakdar, the time is now to correct and unify all those with the cross spirit. As the Phoenix Eagle and Estoile United States government, we shall practice the essentials of fairness for the mystery shall now revealed. The so-called devil, Antichrist, is often depicted in the form of a five-pointed star inverted. Biblical Antichrist is a group. 1 John 2, 18, 19, Little children, neophytes, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrist. They went out from among us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt continue with us. U.S. United States. There are several codes within the preceding biblical verses. Members of nations, family of nations within the United Nations, I can safely state the Antichrist, Ante, is not coming. They are here and have been around quite a while. The Antichrist is a group, therefore. Christ must be a group to be the opposite of. Romans 12, 4, 5. For as we have many members in one body, Assembly Congress, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one, e pluribus unum, out of many one a body in Christ, and every one members one another. Francisco 12, 11, 12, and 27, but all these worketh that one and the selfsame spirit, Christ's spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, also is Christ, i.e. Christ has many members. 27 now ye are, now the body, assembly, congress, group, etc., of Christ. Consciousness from the head to the toe, and the posterity of the UN opposable force. 3. The Antichrist was a part of the Christ group, but was somehow different. 4. The Antichrist did not continue on the path, but fell short. Updated interpretation. The administrative anti-e-Christ system is here. The administrative anti-e-Christ is a government. Hosa 967, for unto U.S., U.S., United States, a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Of increase of his government and peace there shall be no end, and to establish it with judgment and justice from henceforth, even forever. The Lord of hosts will perform this. If Christ has a government, the Antichrist has to have a government. 3. The preamble, United States of America Association, with its Republican form of government and natural-born citizens, are different from the administrative United States of America Corporation, with its democracy form of government and its natural-born citizens. However, the denizens were and are a part of the superior citizens. The North American Chaze prophet, Noble Drew Ali, told certain Moors not to get rid of their Bibles. 
and from the previous quotes, he definitely was qualified to carry the crown title of noble, knowable, or those who know, because he knew that the great scriptural I am what, when, where, who, that, etc., I am. Furthermore, I truly believe that the thirteen five-pointed stars arranged in a six-pointed star are five additional thirteen-year periods to be added to the thirteen esques thirteen period that ended in 1945, and that these additional cycles shall completely terminate the present world power system. The origin of the phrase, Great Seal of the United States. Out of the corruption of the Mauro's Moorish sons, the one-eyed aggressive and brutal male and female world rulers, Second Empire around 11,000 BC arose this Third World Franciscan amalgamated Moorish Empire initiated technically July 4th, 1776, and will truly begin in 2023, or when the unity of man is accomplished. Contrary to the Moorish nationals or traditional Moors in America, belief the so-called Six European Nation erroneously thought to be on the American flag. The six white stripes were not, nor are not secretly, the Franciscan Empire rulers. The word Franciscan is another idiomatic code word rooted in the word Frank or French with the meanings of A, free and B, Frenchman. Black's Law Dictionary, Edit 4, pages 794 and 1590. Frenchman. In early times, in English law, this term was applied to every stranger. Stranger strangers, one who in no event resulting from the existing state of affairs can become liable for a debt. Those who are in no way parties to a covenant, nor bound by it. The expanding Moorish Franciscan Empire initially started by Moros hued people who rebelled against the decaying and corrupt empire of the mothers and sons shall and must be a united planet for all the people, all the time and in all places regardless of complexions, religions or otherwise. From the rise of the Arabic Ottoman Islamic Empire, from the Rasul Muhammad to 1914 WWW2, to the English British Empire 1914-45, and to the American Empire between 1945-2010 are only small karmic and purification cycles. These cycles are necessary in getting rid of negative action and purifying the path to the unification of earth and the unity of man in the service of the oneness of the unopposable. As stated above all of the signs, symbols and emblems used by the United States in Congress assembled, Continental Congress, originated from earlier peoples of the old empire. However, there were and are changes and modifications in the arrangement, design, meanings and codes, that is, these representations have been altered and expanded. This, of course, is also true for the words, terms, phrases, and languages used to accompany the alterations and expansions. However, and even though this brings us to the phrase, Great Seal of the United States, we shall first research the word Latin. Latin, from A, Latin translates to Aladdin, Moorish, Aladdin, and B, Latino, S, and C. In law, the correct form of corrupt form of the word Latina, i.e., Latima, or the older form, Latimore. See Black's Law Dictionary, 4th ed. P.A. 1027 and Origins by Eric Partridge. The modem and coded corrupt Latin language is only a dialect of the old Moraish language, as is all other modem day languages, and it is vital that the family of nations, body of nations of the United Nations, remember this. On pages 8081 of The Eagle and the Shield, it states in Barton's remarks. In the exerg of the Great Seal, July 4th, MDCCL, that is teams in the margin of the same, Sigil, Mag, Ripub Confoid, America. Regarding Barton's Latin, Lati M.O.R. Legends, the following observations are pertinent. Sigillum, Sigilla, Magnum, Magna, Republicae Confoideratae Americae. This phrase has been erroneously or deliberately translated to, I truly believe, the Great Seal of the United States as of 1935 and the Great Seal or Confederate Republic of America at some point, the Latimores or the Sages of the Law are the ones who know or comprehend words of art, and they differ from the grammarians' lawyers who only know lawyer, Latin, i.e.e., -E, the corrupt form of Latin language employed in the old English books and legal proceedings. C.E.G. Black's Law Dictionary, 4th ed., pages 1027 and 1030, respectively. I am using the Latimores' translation of the Great Seal of the United States of America. Recent U.S. Supreme Court Historical Facts, Britain's Subjects. I would also once again seek the family members 
of Nations of the United Nations your indulgence regarding the legal historical facts surrounding the administrative government, however, I shall do so in accord with United States Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas's recent dissenting opinion. At least in American law, the phrase, or its close approximation, appears to stem from the 1606 Charter of Virginia, which provided that all and every persons being our subjects, which shall dwell and inhabit within every or any of the said several colonies, shall have and enjoy all liberties, franchises, and immunities, as if they had been abiding and born within this our realm of England. Federal and state constitutions, colonial charters, and other organic laws, 388 F. Thorpe ed. 1909. Other colonial charters contained similar guarantees to the European colonial settlers' subjects. See 1620 Charter of New England in Threadthorpe at 1839, guaranteeing liberties and franchises and immunities of free denizens and natural subjects. 1622. Charter of Connecticut reprinted in 1 at 553, guaranteeing liberties and immunities of free and natural subjects. 1629. Charter of the Massachusetts Bay Colony in 3 at 1857, guaranteeing the liberties and immunities of free and natural subjects. 1632. Charter of Maine in 3 at 1635, guaranteeing liberties, franchises, and immunities of or belonging to any of the natural-born subjects. 1632. Charter of Maryland in 3 at 1682, guaranteeing privileges, franchises, and liberties. 1663, Charter of Carolina in 5 at 2747, holding liberties, franchises, and privileges in violet. 1663, Charter of the Rhode Island and Providence Plantations in 6 at 32 at 20, guaranteeing liberties and immunities of free and natural subjects. 1732, Charter of Georgia in 2 at 7 and 73, guaranteeing liberties, franchises, and immunities of free denizens and natural-born subjects. Years later, as tensions between England and the American colonies increased, the colonists adopted resolutions reasserting their entitlement to the privileges or immunities of English citizenship. See the Massachusetts Resolves in Prologue to Revolution, Sources and Documents on the Stamp Act Crisis, 56, E. Morgan ed. 1959, resolved that there are certain essential rights of the British Constitution of Government, which are founded in the law of God and nature, and are the common rights of mankind, therefore resolved that no man can justly take the property of another without his consent. This inherent right, together with all other essential rights, liberties, privileges, and immunities of the people of Great Britain, have been fully confirmed to them by Magna Charta IT, Christian laws. The Virginia Resolves at 4748, the colonists aforesaid are declared entitled to all liberties, privileges, and immunities of denizens and natural subjects to all intents and purposes as if they had been abiding and born within the realm of England. 1774, Statement of Violation of Rights, Phones Journals of the Continental Congress, 68, 1904, our ancestors who first settled these colonies were at the time of their emigration from the mother country, entitled to all the rights, liberties, and immunities of free and natural-born subjects within the realm of England, resolved that by such emigration they by no means forfeited, surrendered, or lost any of those rights. The colonists repeated assertions that they maintained the rights, privileges, and immunities of persons born within the realm of England. A natural-born person suggests that, at the time of the founding, the terms privileges and immunities and their counterparts were understood to refer to those fundamental rights and liberties specifically enjoyed by English citizens and, more broadly, by all persons. Presumably members of the Second Continental Congress, i.e. Europeans of Second Congress, and the Aboriginal Moors First Congress, i.e. General Government of the United States Republic, so understood these terms when they employed them in the Articles of Confederation, which guaranteed that the free inhabitants of each of these states, paupers, vagabonds, and fugitives from justice accepted, shall be entitled to all privileges and immunities of free citizens in the several states. Art Bim 4. The Constitution 
which superseded the Articles of Confederation, similarly guarantees that the citizens of each state shall be entitled to all privileges and immunities of citizens in the several states. Art I-4, Section 2, Clause 1. However, as further evidence, not that any is needed, a percentage of taxes that are paid are to enrich the foreign entities King-Queen of England. For courts who adjudicate pursuant to Title 26 shall recognize IMF, which means individual master file, all taxpayers have one. However, to read one, you have to be able to break their codes using file 6209, which is about 467 pages. On your IMF, you will find a blocking series which tells you what type of tax you are paying. You will probably find a 300-399 blocking series which 6209 says is reserved. You then look up the BMF 300-399, which is the business master file in 6209. You would have seen prior to 1991, this was US-UK tax claims, non-refile DLN, meaning everyone is considered a business and involved in commerce and you're being held liable for a tax via a treaty between the US and the UK, payable to the UK. The form that is supposed to be used for this is Form 8288, FIAP TA, Foreign Investment Real Property Tax Account. You won't find many people using this form, however, just the 1040 form. The 8288 forms can be found in the Law Enforcement Manual of the IRS Chapter 3. If you check the OMB's paper, Office of Management and Budget, in the Department of Treasury, List of Active Information Collections, Approved under Paperwork Reduction Act, you will find this form under OMB number 1545092, which says, U.S. withholding tax return for dispositions by foreign persons of U.S. real property interests, statement of withholding on dispositions by foreign persons of U.S. form 8288-8288A. These codes have since been changed to read as follows. IMF 300-309 barred assessment CP55 generated valid for MFT30, which is the code for 1040 form, IMF 310-399 reserved, the BMF 300-309 reads the same as IMF 300-309, BMF 390-399 reads US-UK tax treaty claims. The long and short of it is nothing changed. The administrative government just made it plainer. The 1040 is the payment of a foreign tax to the King Queen of England. Also see Jay's Treaty of 1774 between England and United States and Paris Treaty of 1774. Further, it is my understanding that Queen Elizabeth of England amended US Social Security as follows. S1, 1997, and by 1778, the Social Security Order 1997 made 22nd day of July 1997, coming into force 1st September 1997, at the Court of Buckingham Palace the 22nd day of July 1997. 14th Amendment, Europeans remain subjects of Great Britain. The current European administrative government, along with their European subjects, remain subjects of Great Britain as the current United States constitutional amendments were enacted fraudulently, i.e. 13th, 14th, and 15th, CEG 109 US 03, Diet V. Turner 439 P2D 266 State V. Phillips 1975 540 P2D 936, Coleman V. Miller 307 US 448 59 S CT 972, 28 Tulane Law Review, 22, all of the South Carolina Law Quarterly, 484, Congressional Record, June 13, 1967, Pipage 1541, 1546. As stated above, a declaration was set forth not to include Great Britain's subjects, which they fraudulently enacted the aforementioned constitutional amendments to include themselves as natural-born citizens of the general government of the United States of America. Therefore, they have no standing within the body of the Republic form of government. Requested relief. In conclusion, the above-mentioned historical facts gives no doubt to the family of nations of the United Nations, relatives, that we are in fact the general government of the United States of America, which the family of nations of the United Nations shall present us our proper seats before the family of nations of the United Nations. Moreover, freeze all assets within each member family of nations jurisdiction of the United Nations in the name of the administrative government, including its 
corporate municipalities states, which was illegally accumulated over the years by fraud and deception until further note of the general government of the United States of America. Most importantly, such assets shall include all silver and gold and minerals, including land purchases. Further, all debts owed by the family of nations of the United Nations to the administrative government shall hereinafter be forwarded to the general government of the United States of America and the general government of the United States Republic. However, interest owed on such debts by the family of nations of the United Nations is hereinafter shall be null and void. Most importantly, all outstanding debts owed by the administrative government to any family member of the United Nations shall remain owed to such member payable by Great Britain. We request that each member of the family of nations of the United Nations immediately dispatch an envoy plenipotentiary to Bellevue, Washington, to establish dialogue with the General Government of the United States of America. General Government of the United States, Republic, the nation of Moorish Americans, and to assist in the ongoing transition and reinstatement of the constitutional general government in accord with the established laws of the general government of the United States Republic. Continental Congress. The United States in Congress assembled the Congress of the United States. Official flag of the United States of America, Republican form of state government. The Office of America in the Family of Nations. Original General Territory of the Office of America in the Family of Nations. Mirror the Administrative Government of the United States in the Territory. Original 1, 36 USCS SS 172, Older Pledge. Mirror 1, 36 USCS SS 171, Under God History. Original 2, Fort USCS JP 2 SS 41, Official Seal. Mirror 2, 4 USCS SS 41, Great Seal, 1935-1986, Original 3, Fata USCS Chapter Beef in SS1, Official Flag. Mirror 3, 4 USCS SS1, Historical Flag, 50 Stars. Original 4, Republican Form of Government, Art 4, SS4, 5 USC, SS1511. Mirror 4, Federal Government, 28 USCS SS3 Thimula 2, 5 USCS SS Lumitino 1 2. Original 5, General Constitution, 3 branches. Mirror 5, Federal Administrative 3 Departments. Original 6, The Congress of the United States. Mirror 6, United States Congress. Original 7, Law of Nations, Family of Nations, Article 1 SS 8, Clause 10. Mirror 7, United Nations. Original 8, Common Law, Art 3 SS 1 2. Mirror 8, Statutory Law, Admiralty, 11th Amend. Original 9, Natural Born Citizen. Mirror 9, 14th Amendment Citizen. Original 10, Senate of the United States. Mirror 10, United States Senate, not mentioned. Article 1, S3 in the Constitution. Original 11, Laws of the United States. Mirror 11, Judicial System. Original 12, President of the General National United States Government, Art 2 SS 3, Mirror 12. President of the Corporate National United States Government, 12th Amend, Original 13, de jure, Mihor 13, de facto, Original 14, Articles 1 7, Bill of Rights. Mirror 14, 11th 27th Amendment, ex post facto, Original 15, a declaration July 4th, 1776, Original 13 Nations. Mirror 15, Declaration of Independence, July 4th, 1776, 12 Colonies. Original 16, Enactments. Mirror 16, Executive Orders. Original 17, National Denizen. Mirror 17, Alien. Original 18, Qualified Voter. Mirror 18, Registered Voter. Note, Article WAF USA Constitution. Amend, Eich's US Constitution, ASS, Watch Sections O, CPT, Chapter, USCS, United States Code Services, Lawyers Edition. Previous, current publications of the USCS, also CEG White House, Constitution. Sir Common Law vs. Breche Commerce. Preamble, Constitutional 110th, 11th, 26th Amendment, UCC. Civil and Penal Code, Political Code. Man, male and female. Person, persona, mask, actor. Corporeal, real body, incorporate, made like a body, 
endowed by Creator, limited by bylaws. Created the law, created by the law. Primary state citizen, United States citizen, 14th. Federal non-resident, federal citizen. Man is sovereign. Government is sovereign. Government is servant. Person corporation is servant. Not in servitude, voluntary servitude. Certain unchangeable rights, certain unchangeable statutes, unalienable rights, licensed privileges, rights cannot be revoked, revocable rights, rights and immunities, privileges and duties, responsibilities, limited liabilities, right to contract, contracted rights away, required, mandatory must, federal non-taxpayer, federal taxpayer, wages is not income, wages treated as income, time is private property, time is government property, worker employed, traveler, driver, use, enjoy, operate, automobile household goods, motor vehicle, vehicle, bill of sale, registration, traveler, guest, passenger, allodial land, feudal property, common law, UBO, 501c, 3, non-profit, real money, intrinsic worth, commercial paper, worthless, not subject to public debt, surety for public debt, can question public debt, cannot question public debt, no third party, government is third party, sovereign man, king's right, human resource, king's slave, we, the people of the United States, an explanation continued, dear legal counsels, the federal government is renowned for its complexity, so it is extremely gratifying to be able to compress an understanding of that government and its law into a couple of sheets. Pages 42 and 43 of Title 28, USC of the federal government's own Judiciary and Judicial Procedure Code book, printed by the Government Printing Office, are the most important pages of law in the federal government. On those two pages, Congress explains that the territorial composition of the United States District Courts is only that area subject to the exclusive legislative power of Congress. Did you think that the 50 United States were subject to Congress's lawmaking power? To answer that we offer a riddle. What country gets smaller the more land you add to it? The United States of America de jure is thought to be a nation state, but it is a confederation of nation-states created by the Articles of Confederation, and it consists of the 50 United States. If Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico are combined with the 50 United States, you don't get a bigger and better United States of America. You get the government of the United States and 50 sovereign states. Those odd two pieces of real estate won't ever combine to form a whole nation-state, and that is key to understanding the United States District Courts. The inability to combine the 50 United States, Washington DC and Puerto Rico to form one nation is what explains and gives us the territorial composition of the districts and divisions found in sections 81, 1 to 31 of Title 28 USC. In the rest of Chapter 5, Congress explains that only one district court in all of the 50 states, Hawaii, has been established as an Article III Judicial Court and explains why that court cannot function as a court exercising judicial power. If judicial power is to be exercised in the several states, it will have to be exercised by state courts because the districts have none. The federal government in the several states will consist of two government powers since the federal courts have not been granted Article III, Section 2, judicial power. While one or two branches of government may be good enough to do government work, it takes all three to lawfully act upon a citizen. United States of America General National Government of the United States of America in the Family of Nations, de jure United States District Courts, 2 January 27, 2005. The nature of the complete federal government cannot be understood unless the reader understands all that begins with the caption, Chapter 5, District Courts, and ends with the paragraph below. Historical and Revision Notes If you were not sent pages 42 and 43 of Title 28 USC, or if you have trouble reading or printing out these pages, you can also access Title 28 USC 
via the internet. The impatient reader is invited to go there and read first SS 91 and then examine every other district court to find one ordained and established under Article the Thur. The federal trial courts are universally but erroneously thought to include all the territory in the counties that comprise districts and divisions of the United States District Courts. This perception of the federal trial courts is the result of the quick read encouraged by those who favor a strong, large, and powerful federal government. Congress, on pages 42 and 43, must state in its curiously cryptic way that the territorial composition of the district courts is only the federal territory subject to the exclusive legislative power of Congress because of that is true. The statute law that establishes the federal district courts in the several states must confirm that the territorial composition of the district consists only of federal territory or Title 28 USC could not have been enacted into positive law. By now, you should have those two pages in front of you so that you can take a heavy pencil or marker and write the date. January 1st, 1945, on each page and circle or highlight Alaska, Hawaii, District of Columbia, and Puerto Rico. Now you must determine for yourself what is common to all the place names from section 81 to 131 that are listed on these two pages. All the facts, including the date January 1st, 1945, presented in legislation are important and must be accounted for. You must now write below this paragraph what you think is the territorial composition of the districts and divisions of the United States District Courts that make up the rest of Chapter 5. Remember that your inability to account for all the parts of the whole will make your determination of territorial composition faulty. If you wrote that the entire state, or all of the county territory, constitutes the district, go back and start over. A wise Greek once said that the best law is discovered as a gift from God. Statute law, to put it simply, is godless. Statute law is completely and totally made up by legislators. This and the Constitution is the origin of all the titles of the United States Code. Nothing in these codes is for all time. That is why January 1st, 1945 is used as a reference to determine those federal areas in the several states subject to the exclusive legislation of Congress. Alaska and Hawaii are today states of the Union, but were territories on January 1st, 1945. Washington, D.C. is neither a territory nor a state, but is the product of cession of particular states and the acceptance of Congress is the seat of government. Although it is treated like a state, it is the district subject to the exclusive legislation of Congress pursuant to Article Room Section 8 Clause 17. Puerto Rico is today and was on January 1st, 1945, a possession of the United States and definitely not a state of the Union. The correct answer to the question, what is the territorial composition of the districts and divisions by counties as of January 1st, 1945, is pursuant to Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17, all places purchased by the consent of the legislature of the state in which the same shall be. If the reader is having difficulty understanding the significance of territorial composition, there is a good reason for that. The federal government doesn't want it understood. The federal government will even lie in print to cover up the territorial composition of the United States District Courts. Several editions of the United States Government Manual available on the web falsely state that the United States District Court for Puerto Rico is an Article the Three Court. The Court for Hawaii was so established and ordained in 1959, so the Historical and Revision Notes, SS-119, Puerto Rico can be compared to SS-91, Hawaii to resolve the issue. The only territory that is common to both the several states, territory and possessions of the United States is federal territory within each. Those notes show that the district court judges for Hawaii are to be selected pursuant to SS 133 and 134 of Title 28 USC, which is territorial law, based on no evidence at all and a big fat lie about the United States District Court in Puerto Rico, the entire American legal community is convinced that the federal trial courts in the several states exercise Article the Three, judicial power everywhere within those states. I say the de facto government has gone too far. I have examined the statute law that created every United States District Court 
and I found only one instance where Congress appeared to ordain and establish an Article III United States District Court in any state. In 1959, the Congress created an Article III United States District Court for Hawaii, but made no provision for Article III judges by specifically precluding the President from appointing them. The Code specifically provides for territorial judges for the Hawaiian Article III Court, Title 28, USC. Judiciary and judicial procedure has been enacted into positive law, so the Code shows the same kinds of courts as are found in the statutes. Chapter 5 of Title 28, USC. District courts consist of sections 81 through 144. The names of all 50 states of the Union will found from sections 81 to 131, and in addition in section 88 will be found the District of Columbia and in section 119, Puerto Rico. The nature of the astounding revelations in this letter requires this unique format where facts are presented in support of the proposition that no United States District Court in any state of the Union can exercise Article III judicial power, so these facts can be easily challenged. This kind of presentation invites facts that prove the contrary. I will give an example of a fact. Title 28, USC, is territorial law. This fact will be supported by material found in the notes to SS 91. Those in federal litigation or who are contemplating that exercise should be aware that legal justice is available only from courts that have judicial power. Any litigant in any United States District Court in any state of the Union is warned that these courts have no Article III, Section 2 judicial power whatsoever. The United States District Courts of the several states are not judicial courts, and the judges that sit in those courts are not Article III judges. Judges of these courts are appointed for life terms, but they obtain judicial powers only when appointed to judicial courts with Article III power. The court is the equivalent of an office. An office has power because the officer that occupies that office has duties to exercise in that office. District courts and district court judges of the United States have been mistaken for Article III courts and judges since the Judiciary Act of 1789. The mistaken belief that a court has jurisdiction is sufficient to confer it when everyone is equally mistaken, but that jurisdiction remains what it is and not what it is mistaken to be. Names and labels, and like book covers, do a notoriously bad job of identifying contents. Just as a book cannot be accurately judged by its cover, a federal trial court is not accurately described by the name of the state where it is located. The names of the federal trial courts in the several states are labels that are fully explained in the first sentence of the historical and revision notes that are part of the law. Sections 81, 131 of this chapter show the territorial composition of districts and divisions by counties as of January 1, 1945. Since the conclusion of the Civil War, the states of the Union are the federal territory within the state and the state officers who have taken an oath to uphold the United States Constitution. Since President's Day, the mayor of San Francisco has extended the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment to its logical conclusion by permitting same-sex couples to pay a tax in order to obtain an application, license, and certificate of marriage, just like anyone else. States cannot regulate marriage, but the federal government can tax it by license. The state of California, like other opponents of gay marriage, is learning that the courts cannot enjoin the collection of a tax, especially one that is voluntary. The right to marry is a human right, and human rights are to be secured by government, not abridged. Government involvement in marriage is limited to imposing a tax on those who submit to an application process and payment for a license and obtaining a certificate of registration. The subject matter of Chapter 5 of Title 28 USC is the territorial composition of districts and divisions by counties as of January 1, 1945 of the courts named in Sections 81 131, which can only be the areas subject to the exclusive jurisdiction of the United States, Federal Territory. These areas consist of places like the national parks, military bases, federal buildings, and federal courthouses. Crimes that occur on or in these federal places are federal crimes, and the federal courts for the district is the proper forum for trials of those crimes. Article the three judicial power is not needed for those courts, and those courts are certainly without such power. There is no room for legalistic interpretations of Chapter 5. On January 1st, 1945, 
the judicial districts of United States district courts had only one thing in common. Those judicial districts consisted of federal territory and some admiralty jurisdiction for some coastal courts. Those common characteristics have not changed since then, and even if they had, the January 1st, 1945 date was to be used to reckon the federal territories existing on a given date. The January 1st, 1945 date is critical to understanding the United States District Court's territorial jurisdiction as consisting of federal territory as of a time in a span of time. The first day of 1945 forces the mind to focus on that which can change within geographical boundaries, federal territory which can be increased by purchase and consent of the legislature of the state. The only legislation since the first Judiciary Act on September 24, 1789, to create an Article the Third United States District Court is found in SS 91 of Title 28 USC. That section documents the change of a territorial court to an Article the Three Court without actually giving the court Article the Three judicial power. Nothing can be done to change the nature of these courts in the several states without the direct intervention of Congress by legislation. A judge without judicial power can do nothing to change the jurisdiction of the court where he presides. Any litigant or defendant in any federal court proceeding who attempts to have the United States District Court consider the issues raised in this letter should be aware that the American Law Institute's restatement of judgments holds that such a litigant is bound by the court's ruling. A federal judge sitting in a trial court in any United States District Court is without judicial power. While such an official can be a life-tenured bureaucrat, such an official cannot be expected to rule other than administratively. These are the facts. No United States District Court in any state may lawfully exercise Article III court power. The lawful jurisdiction of the federal district court or courts is limited to those places where Congress has exclusive jurisdiction. It is also clear that federal judges and federal courts have been used in the past by the federal government to control those persons opposed to the usurpation of power by the national government. The federal courts known as United States District Courts are federal and territorial in that these courts implement administrative law on territory exclusively under the jurisdiction of the corporate United States. United States District Courts are being used by the Administrative Congress primarily to prevent the rendition of law and equity in national courts by masquerading as Article the Through Courts. These courts are incapable of achieving justice because they are not Article the Three Courts. Generally speaking, we have a federal government that consists of an administrative congress of the corporate United States, an administrative president of the corporate United States and district courts of the United States because there is one in Hawaii and one is Washington, D.C. The true nature of the government of the United States of America is libertarian. Very few of the posterity of the people that ordained and established the Constitution are aware that the loose confederation of state governments that became the United States of America is a true libertarian government. The purpose of the Constitution was to establish and limit government to the purposes for which it was established. Unfortunately, the Administrative Congress has used very effectively the mechanisms in the Constitution to limit the third branch of the national government to the people's detriment. Congress has intentionally failed or refused to provide Article III courts in the several states. The present intent of the federal government is to subject citizens of the several states to its administration. Most if not all people who find themselves in a federal court are not aware that court has no Article III judicial power. Americans do not want to be in federal courts that cannot dispense justice. For more than 200 years, Americans have been subjected to administrative law in courts they believed were dispensing the judicial power of the United States. Disguised administrative courts are being used to subvert freedom. The federal district courts are administrative, legislative, non-judicial courts that are an extension of any administrative harassment caused by persons claiming to represent the de jure national government. Individuals appointed to United States district courts are permitted to believe that they are Article III judges because they are appointed for life. These individuals are actually urged by the other two branches of federal government to act like Article III judges. Article III, judicial power imposes self-restraint on judges. 
Only judges appointed to Article the Third Courts may exercise the judicial power of the United States found in Article the Third, Section 2. Judicial power imposes restraints on the judges that have it and that serves as some protection from judicial abuse. All justices appointed to the Administrative Supreme Court of the United States are genuine Article the Three judges. The judges of other than judicial courts, of course, have no constitutional judicial power, so they tend to be extremely rigid in the way they administer their judicial business. These judges are or can be called territorial, legislative or administrative. The rigidity of the non-judicial court is the result of the tight reign that the Congress maintains over the personnel and business of non-Article III courts to solely achieve congressional purposes. The Constitution is a limitation on Congress. The Constitution grants to Congress power to create courts by exercising three different powers. At various times in the history of this country, Congress has created courts using these various powers under Article Brennanum, Article the Third, and Article Four of the Constitution. One, the Congress shall have power to constitute tribunals inferior to the Supreme Court. Two, the judicial power of the United States shall be vested in one Supreme Court and such inferior courts as the Congress may, from time to time, ordain and establish. Three, the Congress shall have power to dispose of and make all needful rules and regulations respecting the territory or other property belonging to the United States. Article the Three Courts would also be limited to a territorial jurisdiction. Based on examination of the statute law that created the various territorial United States District Courts throughout the several states, Article the Third Courts would also be of limited federal territorial jurisdiction. Lawyers and judges must be aware of the true nature of the courts they practice and preside in. Everyone must be made aware that the United States District Courts established in Washington and in 48 other states by United States statute are not Article the Three Courts. There should be no confusion as to the difference between Article the Three Courts and those courts that are not Article the Three Courts. Article the Third District Courts are not territorially different from the tribunals inferior to the administrative Supreme Court that administrative Congress may constitute pursuant to Article Lassim. Federal courts do not extend their judicial districts beyond federal territory. Article Three courts are territorial courts that may exercise the judicial power of the United States. Article One and IV courts have no such power. Congress has established Article the Three district courts in Hawaii and the District of Columbia. The two district courts of the United States that were ultimately pronounced ordained and established by Congress pursuant to Article the Third of the Constitution are the only ones that can exercise the judicial power of the national government. Lifetime tenure during good behavior is criteria for a judge, not criteria for an Article the Three court. Lifetime tenure fuels the universal presumption in the legal academic community that the federal district's courts are Article the Three Courts and the judges that sit on those courts are Article the Three Judges. Because Congress can make law locally or nationally, it must be presumed that law enacted by Congress is territorial in scope rather than national. Foley Brothers Inc. v. Filado, 336 U.S. 281, 1949, unless a contrary intent is shown in the legislation itself. The legislation creating the District Court for Hawaii is a clear example of the presumption and an example of a national legislative intent to create an Article the Three Court. Combining the District Court for Puerto Rico with the other United States District Courts identifies them all as territorial. The federal district courts are found in Title 28 USC Judiciary and Judicial Procedure in the sections numbered from 81 to 131. Title 28 USC was enacted into positive law in 1948. The district courts were found in Chapter 5 just as they are today. The districts themselves had not changed from 1911 when they were described as the territory that existed on July 1, 1910. The territory was, for example, the state of California, which then and now consists of the federal territory within California. Puerto Rico is not a state of the Union. Its inclusion in Chapter 5 and appearance in SS 119 identifies the states in the sections of Chapter 5 as mere labels for the areas of federal territory. The Commonwealth of Puerto Rico includes the federal territory under the jurisdiction of the corporate United States. Included, for example, in the state of California is the territory of the United States located in the California Republic. 
use of the state of California facilitates the use of federal law to create a California personal income tax. State of California denotes those special federal places where the United States has jurisdiction. Congress established the only Article III court for a state of the Union in Hawaii. Hawaii appears in SS-91 as the only Article III court, but that court is qualified as to the way judges are to be appointed to that court. That qualification precludes the exercise of Article III judicial power by any judge appointed to that court. Under the heading for SS-91 Hawaii, Court of the United States District Judges will found Section 9A of Pub L 86-3, which provides that the United States District Court for the District of Hawaii, established by and existing under Title 28 of the United States Code, shall thenceforth be a Court of the United States with judicial power derived from Article III of the Constitution of the United States. Provided, however, that the terms of office of the district judges for the District of Hawaii then in office shall terminate upon the effective date of this section and the President, pursuant to sections 133 and 134 of Title 28, United States Code, as amended by this Act, shall appoint, by and with the advice and consent of the Senate, two district judges for the said district who shall hold office during good behavior. All of Title 28 USC provides for the territorial government of the United States and nothing of Article III can be put back into it without destroying the entire Title 28 USC as positive law. In other words, there may be a present belief by all of the state and federal judiciary, all the legal academic community and all the local state and federal government officials that the United States District Courts for the 50 states of the Union are Article III courts, but they are wrong. Congress prevented the ordination of the Article III it established for Hawaii by denying the court full Article III judges. Congress took a territorial court established by an existing rule under Title 28 and created an Article III District Court for Hawaii. It must be noted that the territorial jurisdiction did not change, only the description of the court. Congress has provided that territorial Title 28 USC judges be appointed to the United States District Court for the District of Hawaii are to be appointed to an Article III court. The district judges for the District of Hawaii are specifically to be appointed by the President pursuant to Sections 133 and 134 of Title 28, United States Code, as officers of the United States but not as judges of an Article III court. These two sections are also to be used in appointing any of seven judges of the Puerto Rico District should a vacancy occur there. It can be deduced that appointment pursuant to SSS 133 and 134 of Title 28 will always produce territorial judges. The Hawaii Judicial District established in SS 91 of the Judicial Code of 1948 was a territorial court. Section 9A above clearly indicates that prior to the admission to statehood, the United States District Court of Hawaii was not a true United States court established under Article III of the Constitution to administer the judicial power of the United States, Balzac v. Puerto Rico, 258 U.S. 298, 3D12, 1922. In Balzac, Chief Justice William Howard Taft stated that United States District Court for Arecibo, Puerto Rico, as Puerto Rico was known then, created by virtue of the sovereign congressional faculty granted under Article 4, SS3, of that instrument, of making all needful rules and regulations respecting the territory belonging to the United States. Puerto Rico is the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico, and it has not been incorporated into the United States, though its inhabitants are United States citizens. The inclusion of Puerto Rico in Chapter 5 as SS1-19 does not make the District Court for Puerto Rico an Article III Court because Puerto Rico has not been incorporated into the Union. Puerto Rico fits comfortably among the names of the 50 states because the geographical areas are mini federal territories or federal enclaves.